that real quick. What? Find. The fuck is I? I played in beta, but I haven't played. Like, then I didn't play for like a year. I think. I'm actually really surprised I knew how to set up OBS. Nice. See. Right at the start, one thing I'd like to see is, is to like, press tab more just to like see like what your team is buying. Mm, okay. I think. On pistol rounds, it's not a, not a huge deal, but like on later rounds, it becomes really important so that you can adjust your playstyle based on like what your team is buying or not buying, for example. Like if they have some, some utility but not other utility. Also, I just realized that the bottom. Oh, the video is slightly cut off, but I guess it's fine. It actually seems like, yeah, the top is like, has a black border. <laughs> so I think uh, your OBS, I think you actually dragged it downward. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I think the bottom matters that much. I can see it. Yeah, Pretty. just wanted to point it out. I'm on Boomba, you swing left. Backside. I hate your spammers. Oh, hey, when do you? Backside. I hate okay. your spammers. It's a slight mistake, not by you, but by him. He, when he's throwing an aid, he should throw it over the box. Here, he, he picks the stage to throw it in, and that's why he gets yeah. one Yeah. Uh, so let's see what Great happens. Show. We see the stage, we're finding the stage. Backside. Then we see the Reyna. Reyna just kills both of them. Uh, at this Reyna. point, I would actually consider rotating to A, because now, now we know that there's definitely three people on B sites. There was two people that we saw in a third person now we now see on CT. Even if we don't see the chamber here, I would probably expect that the enemy team would rotate anyways. So now there's now right. four people. Oh. Last I think um, one thing you could do, and it's not a huge, like a major uh, right issue, now, is that HR. as soon as you find yourself in a situation like this, where your team has like tried to execute and it failed, and then that has most likely drawn or drawn attention two bumps at B so that the enemy team, you would expect them to rotate the, to B like right away, right? So what I would do in this situation is probably just like run back to A, like full sprint to A. And then okay. maybe you can like fight a 2v1 with you and your Reyna versus someone who's still on A. Or maybe the whole enemy team just completely rotated and you get the site for free. Right. But uh, Reyna and Sage have 50. What kind of ends up happening is that now there's four people on B site, or, or four people, like two on site and then two CT spawn, and I'll like it's gonna be really hard to actually Sweet. take the site. Oh. Last yeah. player standing. They're three stock, that's usually how it is. Kill my copy. <laughs> Iggy, smoke, uh, that's that's when when I hit buy, that's when yep. I look at what other people are, are buying. Okay, that's good. Copy. The only thing is that it doesn't tell you what utility they have, so for that you would have to um, like look at the above their head to see what mm -hmm. utility that they're buying. I think this, yeah, one, this only shows you like what guns they have. Yeah. Okay. So actually, we buy lights, okay. inspector. Oh, we don't buy inspector. Okay. No, I I think I sold it because um so okay. no one else was buying. Kill my copy. Okay, we have a deagle with two deagles. Okay. And okay. Let me ask you. What do you think about the light shields? I think I okay. Whenever I play Spectre, I buy light shield in Spectre. I think I just didn't sell it. Okay. So you 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 meant to sell the shield as well? Is yeah, that, yeah. Okay. Should I not have bought it like normally? Yeah, I think you should just sell it. The only reason to have light shields is if you're already buying something else, like if you buy. Maybe a Deagle, maybe a Marshall, or a Spectre or something. Okay. To like, sort of protect your investment, but because you're not investing in anything, the only thing you have is Light Shields. The only reason to have Light Shields in this situation with just the Classic is if you were 
like let's say you're trying to like challenge a, a marshal or something okay but it's like really really specific otherwise i would, I would just say just full save or buy a decal or something yeah so let's talk about this executes uh, we see chamber he backs away like a few guys that means you guys can easily execute for free here you do have to watch for trips there's a trip to your bottom right which you really have to break because otherwise now your whole team is like slowed mm, okay just stay slow for free plus the smoke and then our rage should not have gone so quickly the boot bot is fine but she shouldn't satchel because now she's way too ahead she double satchels into a volume one no one can help her no no that, that's not your fault so this push is basically dead because this trip was not shot at mm -hmm. at this point i would just no, back no, out that, that's not your fault reloading i just got wall banged in the head start walking start walking because killjoy is walking okay but okay now we just i usually when i one. rotate i i full full run okay the only thing is that um we don't know if, if someone is like be short, so we have to like when we're coming through here. I just got wall banged in the head. Like it's less okay. likely that someone is gonna be in A slash B link. Like we're peeking this. But as soon as we peek outside of this, like we don't know if someone's could be around this corner. We don't know if someone could be peeking from, from hookah. We don't know if someone's gonna be to the left exactly. And we also don't know if someone's actually directly behind us to the like the corner to our right. Right. Okay. So actually, we didn't even check that. We also need to check the box to our right. But yeah, the, the, the reason I was saying like is to walk is mostly just because Killjoy is walking, and also be, because we don't know if, if someone was be short. If someone was be short, and us stopping would basically be a straight up giveaway that yeah, we're rotating to to be. Okay. Trying to see what is uh Kyoje was speaking. Oh, she's really yeah. okay. I'm for yeah, I thought I th I think I thought someone was speaking, and so I ch I swung with them, but I guess not. Yeah, it made sense. The Kyoje should have helped you a bit, but I think she was just happy to be reloading. Okay, not a big deal. Just eco round. Yo, you guys have mics. I'm just bad with pistols. That's all. Yeah. One thing I would say about your radar is that you should. Generally, do not keep it centered on yourself. You want to see as much of the map as possible at all times. So okay. That, say, for example, you're you're in like this position for the reason, and then something's happening on bomb site B, and we have no idea because the mini map is cut off. Okay. Even like here, for example, if we're like. Playing like A short, we actually can't see B elbow. Unfortunately, your whole team is five second again, and this is gonna get shut down. So like, all right, one second. All right, sorry about that. Um, unfortunately, your team is five second again, and what I would really like to say is that. Either you or some of your teammates go showers so that you guys can like take advantage of multiple angles. Okay. Right now there's like all five of you guys are a short. If someone smokes it again or if the um the chamber trip gets activated that turns into a slow, then this this push is gonna get shut down. Or the if the sage throws us throws an ice orb, this push is gonna get shut down. And just like that. And that boom out's kind of a waste. Uh, we don't have to push smoke. So now, actually, Irena is the first person to realize this, that, okay, this, this push is shut down, let me go somewhere else. So actually, he's going, or well, she's going to showers. And one option you have is that instead of just, just like sticking with your four stack here, is that you just leave them as a three stack and then go join your Irena. Okay. So that your Irena's not alone. You can also I think get a, I just have to be more aware, like, in present time when I play. Yeah, mini map. Mini map and body language. So, what do I mean by body language? What I mean is like, say you're looking at this omen, right? This omen 
is inside smoke and like pre-aimed at heaven. And then to me, there's like a high chance that most likely he's thinking about, oh, I'm going to push it to smoke. Because otherwise, why is he in the smoke? And just looking at heaven, right? Or I pre-aim mm -hmm. at heaven. So there's a high chance that he's going to either push it to smoke or possibly he might just like, oh, I'm just thinking about whether I should push into the smoke. And if I don't push the smoke, then I'm going to back out or something. But if he does push through smoke, then we don't want him to be alone. We want to go with him. So whenever our, our team or teammates are playing aggressive, we want to play aggressive at the same time. Or we want to make a play at the same time. Okay. Instead of doing one-on-one. -on -one. Right. So okay. we, it basically, it's like it, it boils down to um, not allowing 1v1s to happen with your team. Instead, force those 1v1s to become 2v1s. Right? Okay, so he's like thinking about it, he's thinking about it, and then he leaves the smoke, and then he's like, he goes back into the smoke, and then now he's like really committed, and he just straight up push this, pushes through the smoke. When this happens, I would just push through the smoke as well. Okay. Like right now, like ACP. He actually made it across, which means that there's nobody. So actually, let's go to a map. And, uh,. We'll talk about what angles he actually managed to clear. Okay, so can you see my, my web browser? Yes. Okay, so we're on binds and we have a smoke. Uh, this is bind, right? Yeah, this is bind. So we have a smoke. It happens to be like this, and our omen has pushed through the smoke for the lamps. And like this is our omen. omen. And then we have a smoke, he actually smoked heaven, and he smoked to the right of the truck. So that is like this. So what when when he ran through the smoke and got to lamps without getting shot at by the way, and actually survived, that means that he indirectly cleared this angle. And he indirectly cleared bench, so that everything from here, well, maybe like here, and then all of this is now cleared. Okay. Right. There's probably somebody in lamps. There's probably somebody in heaven, or at least there, there could be someone in heaven. There could be someone in lamps. There could be someone somewhere on site. Let's say the Tetris, or maybe they're copy to the right, or possibly uh, on the box uh, outside of shower as well, it's less likely. And like these are the angles to, to be to be worried about. And then now when we think about Omen who just ran through smoke, now we, we can say that all this is cleared. So that, that therefore I can also run through the smoke. And then I don't really have to like look at these angles, instead I'll look at other angles. Well, actually, this, this is basically all the angles. Like, these are the angles that you have to worry about when you're running through this. Okay. But basically, like, what I'm trying to get at is that when your team's playing aggressive, you want to play aggressive as well. When a teammate is, like, pushing through smoke, even though it might be, like, a really bad idea, you should just push through smoke anyways. Because okay. now the, the, the smoke is not really, like, um, blocking you, per se. I mean, like, it's a deterrent, but because your teammate is already on the other side of the smoke, by you, your teammates, whatever, you have like what you pull, let's say like Sage and Erase or whatever is on, and then who else is on your team, uh, Killjoy, is on this side of the smoke, then none of you guys are gonna, gonna get into any gunfights before like, the, the first one who's gonna get to a gunfight is your Omen. And okay. I'm just kind, of, just kind of throwing a lot of stuff out there, but basically what I just want to get at is just that, you see Omen running through smoke, you just went through smoke with him. Right. ACP. So what I'm expecting to happen is that Omen is either going to stay in this spot or he's going to push the lamps and then he's going to start a volume one. Okay. Or possibly okay. he might push this way. But it seems like he's like he's like geared to like push the lamps based on what like what he's looking at. He um when he pushed the smoke, when he pushed the smoke, he he pushed up to lamps and he's facing this way. So based on that binary image, that tells me that he's probably going to push into lamps and when he goes into lamps, there's probably going to be somebody in lamps, and there's going to be a 1v1 that happens here. 
And okay. again, we want to avoid 1v1s. We want to turn these 1v1s into 2v1s as much as possible. Right, okay. So, say for example, if Omen's here, and then you also push two smoke, and then Omen is like, he's prepping a flash. Maybe he's flashing this way. Right? And then as soon as he flashes, he pushes in, and then you push in with him. You follow him. You trade him out. Okay. So, that's ideally what would happen. Okay. So, let's go back to the video. Wait, just like that, he's pushing through ramps. Okay, and actually, uh, Rain gets a pick, and uh, what do we see on the minimap? We see Jet, Jet's dead. Nice we see Chainbay, we see Brim. So we now, now we know that all the defenders, well, most likely all the defenders on A, are on Tetris, like stacked on top of you on Tetris. Right? We know so, two are here, let's rotate. Here, let's rotate. We should basically just commit to this, because you guys already have sight. Oh. I also wouldn't wall like that either. Maybe. Do the, yep. Would you do the one from truck to the crates? Um, uh, that that is the default wall. The the thing is that uh, when you wall like this, at this specific time, because like Irena is flashing and then peeking the brim, and now you kind of isolate angles so that. I guess it kind of goes both ways because now you, your Rainer only has to worry about one angle, but then the other team also only has to worry about one angle. So while like your Rainer is like pushing right side, now the enemy team only has to look at that one angle where Rainer is pushing from. Right. So that, I think from what I was thinking is that we don't have to push them; they have to push us. That's true. I would probably say to hold off on the wall until after you plant the bomb, and then you've contested the the enemies on Tetris a little bit. Maybe kill one or kill two, or maybe you guys trade each other or something like that, and then and then you can go for the wall. Okay. Because what I'm expecting right now is that Zvena is like really intent on pushing and dies because the see like the enemy Vena, enemy Vena, and the Brim only have one angle to worry about. Like there's no one to to threaten peeking from the from the left side of Tetris because you walled it. Okay. So the wall kind of goes both ways where it helps your team but also helps the enemy team. Would you just do the default wall then? I would I would wait. Okay. Yeah, I would I'll probably wait. I mean there's a lot of factors that goes into it. There's no I don't want to say there's like any right or wrong answer. It just most led there's a lot of trade-offs between each of the answers. That's why I that's why I say like it's better to wait so, until you have like, a clear, good reason that this is the best answer or this is the best option. Okay. I thought she didn't trail your raise there. You're too busy backing up. But here you should probably tell your killjoy to like play off of each other so that either you pick first and then she picks right after or she picks first and you pick right after okay yeah. actually let me go back to this and after your rainer dies we're backing up we lose our raise now we get to this position and then we just kind of wait let me ask you what are you thinking um i'm just playing time okay what else or is that it um here <laughs> Uh, I, th I think that's all I'm thinking. Okay, so let's point out something. So we, we see here, yeah. that Brim and Reno were Tetris, you know, Chambers on Heaven. There's already three people here, and it's gonna be actually be, be really difficult to defend this. I mean, I mean, unless you guys just like. Kind of outplay them and like outain them, right? So, what I would say is that when your team is down in numbers, you want to actually take some risks, some calculated risks, to try to even the numbers, especially because you don't have any any utility to really slow down a push. Like what I, what I expect to happen is that you guys 
stay here and then and the enemy team would just like the the, the brim the rainer and then even the chim the chimic probably just like stay heaven most likely and just like hard watch like a short or something and then the brim and rainer would just like push in toward you guys and then kind of trade each other out and like kind of play a numbers game right mm -hmm. alternatively they can also just like they can two man push into lamps and then trade each other out against the omen so like if the enemy plays it correctly like the plays their plays the numbers game to their advantage where they just trade each other then eventually they're gonna win mm -hmm. okay so we want to do what we can to stall even though we don't have any utility to like slow it down like we don't have wall anymore and we don't have any ice orbs so probably what i would do is i would look to make a play either with the killjoy or make a play with the omen so maybe you can like look at your omens and ask him hey do you have flash or maybe just look like look above his head to see if he has flash maybe you can coordinate something maybe he'll flash out of lamps and you can aggress aggressively peek out of lamps maybe you can peek heaven if chamber is like sticking out maybe you can peek tetris or something and try to get a kill that way okay and another thing I'm worried about is that if they two man push into lamps, because at least you and Kyojo like have somewhat of a of crossway set up, but Omen is basically holding solo holding lamps by himself. So I'm I'm really worried about our Omen like getting caught in a in a mummy two, and then maybe he gets a kill, but if he, even if he does get the kill, most likely he'll die to the trade. Okay, so let's see how it plays out. I'm also worried about some brim smoke because he hasn't used any smoke. He, uh, he used one smoke at the start, but he still has two extra extra smokes. So just like that, I I'll, I'll got a kill, but he immediately got traded. That's a good pick by you. This is too uh, too wide of a swing by right here. So this first pick is good because you're you're peeking when Owen makes contact. The second peek is reasonably good because you also want to peek when Owen makes contact, even though he's dead. But you kind of white swing way too far here to fight this rim. Like you kind of expose yourself to almost the entirety of sight. Should where... I just peek a little bit? Yeah, peek a little bit. Okay. Nice. You know, actually, I want to peek with I'll kill Joy this whole time. So like, uh... we get into a fight with Brim. We manage to survive, and then we look at our kill Joy. When you look at Kyojo right here, let me ask you, what do you think? What comes to mind? I think she's going to die next. Okay, what else? Uh, I'll probably peek with her after. Okay, after I would say, I I would say, yeah, you want to peek as soon as possible. I mean, yeah, but right after you reload, you want to be peeking because this Kyojo is, is like fully exposed and she's like hunting for a gunfight right now. Nice. Should she not be? She should not be, but okay. she is. So you can't control... Like what your team does like she's choosing to peek aggressively even though she shouldn't be but what you can't control is yourself so that if you see the killjoy playing really aggressively like this even though she shouldn't be then you can also play aggressively at the same time okay so i hear like you're done reloading now you want to peek because okay. this killjoy is like hunting for gunfight right away and then managed actually manages to survive so now she's in a really good position so she's improved her positioning you're smoked out, but it's not a big deal because you're playing, your goal is to play off Killjoy anyways. So, let me ask you, in this situation, what are you thinking? Um, thinking now or in-game? Right now. Um, you... I think I should just wait for the, the defuse, like the tap, and then swing with Killjoy. Okay. Let me ask you, who should make first contact? Who should pick first? Me. Why is that? Because they don't know that she's there. Mm. And then I'm like, they she'd be behind them. No? Do they know that you're there? Like, do they know that you're in lamps? Mm-hmm. Okay. But they don't know that you could go wrap around, though. Let's go. Right, okay. Let's go map. Okay, so Killjoy made it to the here. And actually, let me change the color because the orange is not that great. Wait. Killjoy made it to here. And we are here. And 
Let's see, West Palm. Palm is kind of default-ish next to truck. So Palm is, is here. Here's Palm. I guess. Okay, square. Okay. And we say we're also smoked out, so we're inside the smoke. And then, um, I mean, you are in lamps, but they don't actually know that you could be, like, like pushed up to here, right? Mm-hmm. This whole time that maybe you, you walk through you haul maybe on this side of the truck maybe you're here unless someone was like if someone was like tetris say the the vein was tetris and she was already peeking this angle but anyways that besides the fact of where, where they of what information that enemy team has um in terms of who peeks first we want to make sure that the order like the order peaking matters right because we want it to Guarantee, if possible, that when we when we peak, that our fight becomes a two v one. Okay. So, uh, if you were to peak first, let's say you peak here, and then now you're standing here, and then you look at all of this, right? We don't know mm -hmm. that if someone happens to be, if someone happens to be, let's say Tetris, let's say Rainer's at Tetris. And then you know, Brim uh, taps the bomb. Right now they're both looking at you, and when our KJ peeks out, when she makes uh, like she peeks out on your contact, then she can only shoot the Brim, or she can only she only has eyes on the bomb. Okay, so if so, Killjoy should um, peek first, so I can get sight of both of them. So, I mean. This is kind of a specific situation because it's like a 2v2 and because of one person is tapping around but the other person is not. It's, it's simplified to say that if, if there's only one person, um, let's see, if there's only one person and we're not necessarily looking at the bomb, but we're just, we're just peeking in general. Let's say that we're peeking in general. So that when we peek in general, we're going to look at bomb or look at Tetris or we'll look at bench or whatever. But when Kyoja peeks out, she can only look at the bomb, right? She only look, looks at, she can only look at this. She can look at bench, but it'll take her like a few seconds to get there to look at bench or look at Tetris. Okay. So when I say that Killjoy should be peeking first, it's so that if someone is here, if Killjoy gets in the fight, that means that the fight is happening here. And then when we peek out, we can immediately convert this fight into a 2v1. Okay. Compared to the other way around, Let's say if we peek out, we might actually find ourselves with a fight at bench. We might actually find ourselves in a, in a gunfight at someone at Tetris. And then when Kyoji peeks out, she'll be too late because by the time that you by the time that she gets to position, like she gets around this box here, when she gets to this spot to peek Tetris or peak bench, then and the fight could have been already decided. Like this person who is at Tetris could already retreat back, hide behind these boxes here at Tetris. Okay, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll find another example when it comes, if it comes up again. Okay, so back to VLC. One enemy remaining. Last what happened to Reyna? I think Killjoy killed her. Okay, I, I see. swung. And then I killed him. Okay, so that's basically what you said. Fortunately, okay. they, they have to be stacked on top of each other. Really, they should be a little bit split. Or, let's see what happens. Like, what position should tap? Let's see exactly what so happens. So, Reyna, Reyna was on bomb, I think. And Grim was guarding in front of her. Mm, okay. Good job. Was he even at the tap? Okay, there was a tap. And it's actually halved. One enemy remaining. Good job. Good Goodbye. Okay, so really well done so far. Okay, let's look at money. Everybody has guns, great, except for one person. Killjoy doesn't have a gun. You should probably offer to buy for her. 
Yeah, I think Kildred just bought a deagle. Yeah, I'll buy her next time. Or buy someone next time. And uh, also notice that you don't have full utility. Like, you still have a slot for an ice warp. Was that intentional, or what were you thinking? I think it was just intentional. Why is that? Just to kind of save up a bit. What are you saving up for? Um, Next round. So even if you lose this round, you'll still have 5k. Worst case, you know, you'll f you have 5k. So okay. that, that's like enough to like buy anything you want, right? Mm hmm So I think, uh, you sh especially if the utility is going to carry over into next round, you should just buy it to help guarantee this round. Gotcha, okay. This is also a really wide swing. You just like completely swing the whole angle. <laughs> Luckily no one's here, but it's okay, it's okay for now. And another issue again, your team is like 5 stacks, so now this one smoke, I shut this push down. So this is already uh, what, the second time that this kind of thing has happened. In future rounds, I'll probably, probably think that we should just default more. Okay. So, another thing I noticed. Yeah, I... Let's see, when does the smoke go down? Smoke happens now. And then again, immediately, Vayner realizes this. She's the first person to realize this and be like, okay, this push the shit down, let's go somewhere else. So she actually goes to a shower, it's just like the previous round. So again, you can also go if you're now. you can also even consider going B. Let me, let's see, uh, what does the enemy team economy look like? Because yeah. that also dictates how you should play. Okay, they can basically fall by. Okay. Okay, so basically just the same thing as last round. Smoke shifts down a push. Alvena walks up showers. The issue with the like yeah. our elo, um, it no one really has comms. Okay, what kind of comms are you expecting? Just like oh, I'm gonna rotate or like, like anything, yeah, I guess. Just like. Or push with me. Yeah. So in the absence of comms like that, of like, what's happening? What like, basically those are like awareness comms, right? Then you have to rely on your own awareness to figure out what's happening. And by your own awareness, I mean like, looking around you or noticing like what's happening in your screen, as well as what's happening. In the the minimap is like, the biggest awareness indicator of like what is happening on the map right now, all the time. Like where's where is my teammates' positions? What enemies have they seen? Um, who's who's playing on site? Who's not on site? Who have we seen so far? What utility have we seen so far? As well as audio, like um, if we hear like a bunch of footsteps and lamps, oh, then someone in lamps, or we hear a bunch of footsteps like behind us, or we hear footsteps in in showers, for example, or whatever, whatever, or we hear, we hear an op shot from heaven, right? These are all like cues about where the enemy is, what gun they have, and like in general just information and awareness. So wrapping up back to uh, what you said about like your your team not really commenting about what their intentions are. Like most of the time they're, they're not really going to come that hey I'm pushing showers or hey I'm rotating out. Maybe like half the time they might do that but other half even if you're in like a high rank like the same thing's going to happen where they they just automatically do something and then Kind of your team just has to like figure it out, so to speak. Okay. So yeah, when this happens, like just like look at your mini map and like pay attention to like what's happening because it's really there's really nothing else to look to really look at. As soon as as soon as this smoke goes down, then it's like okay, now there's nothing to look at. The only thing I'm really I'm looking at right now is just the mini map and looking at my teammates. Like hey, what do you guys want to do? Do you want to go B? You want to go showers? You want to do something? Right. Okay. Unless you expect the enemy to like push through the smoke, which is like really unlikely. Maybe Jimmy could do it because he could like TP out, but it's really unlikely. Then there's like there's no there's no longer point in like even looking at the smoke. Right. I mean yeah, you can spray through it. Maybe there's like someone like peeking from lamps. At this point there's like there's nothing to look at. Even like here you're like you're like running around, I'll even be, just be looking at the mini map and be like, okay, I see Raina, she's going showers. Maybe I should go showers with her. Or even, I might just think, hey, I'm gonna go B by myself and like, try to gain information or try to figure out how they play B, so either this round or, or future rounds, we can use that, use that information. Right? 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, this so far is playing out just like the previous rounds. Yeah, I don't know what he's And also what happens during the round is like information, right? About like how your team likes to play versus like how the enemy team, particularly how the enemy team likes to play, but also how your team likes to play. Like so far, Yorena has shown that whenever any, an A short push gets shut down, she likes to go showers. And another tidbit is that as she is pushing to showers, this now this is like the second or third time that she's pushed to showers, she has not fought anybody in showers. And right? oh. so to me, that means that we, it, maybe not this round, but definitely in, in subsequent rounds, that in the future we can probably go showers and push all the way to showers for free. Or if there's a, a key round where, like, let's say there's a round where we have seven out of eight on our alts on, on Sage, then there's a high chance that we can just go showers, get the orb, and back out for free. Right, okay. So, like, gaining information that way about not just about, um, like, and like, um, like gaining information about like enemy tendencies. What what angles do they like to play? Do they like to push it up into showers? Do they like to not play showers? How do they respond to um, aggression or noise or etc. from a short, for example? Right? So, mm -hmm. two or like, at least two rounds now that if someone makes noise, like, like a full chart, right? So like if someone makes noise on H right, then the brim immediately smokes H right. So that's information that you can use for future rounds. Like say if you and the next round or something that your team says, Hey, go B, I'm gonna bait A or something. I'm gonna like just spam a bunch of bullets at, at lamps so or spam a bunch of bullets to the box on the right, and then bait the brim to stay A, or bait the brim to spin a smoke on H right, etc. Gotcha. Okay. So then, therefore, when the, the B execute, let's say you have four people executing onto B, now the brim is less likely to have smokes to shut to shut down that push. That there's not going to be a smoke on Hookah, there's not going to be a smoke on Garden because his smokes aren't global. So by keeping him contained on A, for example, because you're baiting information, because you know how exactly how he plays, he keeps smoking a shirt as soon as you make noise, then that's getting value. Like, even though you're not killing him, you're getting value because you're you're keeping him on a site while your team executes on B, and okay. you're also baiting utility too. So like, these these are all like things that you can do. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So yeah, I know this is kind of high level, but I just want to kind of introduce you to the, to these topics about like right. game, game just, commission. I, yeah. I just have to think about these during the game. Yeah. Okay, so let's... One thing we want to focus on is uh, the more fundamental things besides like information, but like um, playing for teammates. So like here, Owen's got a smoke out, he smokes, he's holding W, he's stomping. When this is happening, we want to push it from. Even like, like right here, we're, we're kind of too far behind. But like, now he's peeking to right, based on the... Based on the cone, so looking at the minimap, for example, we see that he smoked heaven, we, he smoked uh, to the right of the truck, same thing as last round, and now he's peeking, there seems to be like a, a tiny sliver. Let's go to, so I can highlight this. <clears throat> okay, so Omen is here, and he's actually peeking this tiny sliver, so there's actually a tiny gap in his smoke. So something to be mm -hmm. worried about when you also pick with him. And if he gets into a gunfight, which I would kind of expect if he's standing in this spot here, then where we're standing here is like too far behind. By the time we get to this position to help him out, like he could be dead already or the fight could have been already decided. Okay. So probably what I would do in this situation. It's not gonna bother. Yeah, actually, I don't know he actually smokes twice. So he smokes heaven. So body language again. He smokes uh, to the truck. He's now he's burned both his smokes. He's pushing in. As soon as I see this, I'm, I'm I should be pushing with him. And then and probably what I would do is that I would spend an ice orb on like well, I would consider spending an ice orb on lamps so that we can use the ice orb to isolate angles. It's less of a of a deal because you have you have two teammates like right next to you. You have a raise and a killjoy, but let's say if if it was just you and your woman, that's something to consider. 
So let's go to the map again. So I can demonstrate what I mean. I think the issue with I used yep. to orb a uh, U-Haul, um, the entrance right there a lot, but then people would complain because they want to push it. Okay, so it depends on like a timing thing. So I'll get to it. So when you're in a short and then Omen has made it to Cubby and then there's a smoke in heaven and then there's a smoke with a gap on it like this. So there's actually a tiny gap through here to worry about. Like here, kind of. And uh, what I'm thinking is that like a default play with just, like, just me and a teammate, if I didn't have teammates, other teammates with me to help watch angles, is that I would throw an ice orb at an angle that I'm worried about, but that I wanted to pick something else first, if that makes sense. So for example, I would throw an ice orb to here, into the lamps, and then say like, this is iced out, and then I would get to this spot here. I would stand here and peek this. Okay. And if someone's here, okay, then we take this this gunfight, 2v1, because we have an omen right next to us. And then once we peek this, and we either that person dies, or we, f we find out that nobody's there, now that this angle is cleared. This angle is clear, and we have all this map control. So far. And by the time that this happens, now we can work, work on U-Haul or lamps, and maybe we can coordinate something with our omen, or we can just, just push with our omen, or wait for our teammate to push. Maybe, maybe we just stand in this spot for now until maybe our omen decides to push, and then we push with them. But by then, this ice will be gone. So this ice like lasts long enough just so that we can peek this spot here, this cubby. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of a different story if like if, if, if you decided to like wall off lamps instead, because the wall obviously lasts much longer, but the, the ice only lasts like, I don't know, five seconds, three to five seconds, which is just, just long enough for you to isolate a bomb one so that you, you and your woman can focus on this right side, take this fight, or clear this angle, and then both of you guys will go into lamps. Okay. Okay. Would I go into lamps even if I had bomb? Uh, I would wait for a teammate to go first. So that's what okay. I meant by your goal is just to, like, almost standing here, and then there's a smoke here, smoke here, you ice this out, and then you get into here. Right? Even though, like, you're technically kind of first, it's not a huge deal because you're almost standing right next to you. If you die, the bombs would just get dropped to Omen, and then most likely Omen would, 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 would uh, like, trade you out if there was a fight here. But then after that, I would just stay here, stay in the slow cubby spots until your team makes a move. Maybe your own pushes in, maybe a killjoy pushes in, maybe killjoy on uh, the uh, raise, like there's a boo bot or something, whatever. Hey, does my mic work? Hello. Yes. Hey, thank you. Then it's probably fucking powering because no one hears me. Hey, thank you for letting me know. Yeah, no problem. All right, any questions so far? Mm-mm. Okay. So the main thing so far uh, is that this Owens is peeking, pushing in. Good kill on, on the on the eyeball. Unfortunately, you died, but it's, it's good that you, you engaged with your team. And you raise straight your outs. So let's see enemy economy. Don't buy the old man by me. Thank you. You fuck. Or actually do we look at so enemy economy yeah. at all? The enemy only looks composed. Their hearts tell a different story. Okay. I got money. I need, need something? Can I get a job? Don't buy me, bro. Don't buy the omen by me. Thank you. You fuck. <clears throat> uh. Yeah, scope the email. On my way. Oh, On my way. Tip the balance in our favor. I'm gonna TP you. Okay, so unfortunately we don't press tab at all. 
step more often to figure out how we should play how we should play this round. So let me go back and because we do press tab around here. <laughs> we found out that everyone's dead and most likely that they have 4K, 4K, 4K that they can sort of buy. The enemy only looks composed. But I'm kind of looking to see that if they are an eco, that changes how we should play this round versus if they're on a full buy or if they're on a half buy, etc. If they're on eco, should we should we should we push? I mean, you more, still have like to be more aggressive. Um, or like, would, how would it change it? So, for example, if you're if there it's a full buy versus a full buy, you're more likely to play default or like gain information, etc. If you're on if they're on an eco, you want to be really careful about being alone. So you you're less likely to like lurk on against an eco round and you want to be really careful about accidentally dropping a gun to the enemy team so like for example if you if you lurk and then your lurk fails you die like that's hugely bad like insanely bad that a round that that's otherwise should have been like really easy to win is now like very losable because now the enemy team has a gun okay and they can play around that gun Another thing is that, let's say that you guys, um, let's say you, like a common thing on Biden that happened recently was that, let's say you execute on B-Long, and um, for whatever reason, like they, they shut you down at B-Long, like you, you you execute onto B, actually let's go to like a map so I can like, play this out a little bit better. Say you guys like, okay, let's, let's go B-Long, and we get to Guardian, and then like one push and pushes out, dies and then another person pushes out also dies and then now it's just three people in guardian and now maybe you have information that okay there's someone elbow there's someone on site maybe there's one person cubby whatever and then because whatever reason they decided to stack b and then you push it shut down now you're thinking oh let's switch it up because there's three people here and then you're like oh i'll take tp this is actually a really bad idea because let's say this person had a classic this one has a classic this one's a classic right they're all on a full save and they just managed to kill get two kills by you guys rotating, like, yeah, you, you can rotate and most likely get the bomb plant, but now they're gonna have two guaranteed guns from these two dead bodies. Mm -hmm. That was a guaranteed Vandal okay. and a guaranteed Vandal, or Phantom or whatever they have. So actually, in this situation, okay. it's it's better to hard commit to this, or <clears throat> at least, like, commit to getting, like, this map control, take the guns, and then maybe, like, you throw into the teleporter or something, something like that, whatever, so that you deny the guns from the enemy team or you just decide just just to commit to this to this uh to the site as a, as a 3v5 because even though like yeah it's a 3v5 that you guys still have gun advantage and you want to make sure that they don't have access to these to these guns here this will be a lot more winnable compared to if you guys took tp what did what did they plan get the bomb plants but now they have Two guns plus like two bodies with classes that can just like kind of use as bait. Okay. Right, so so this is like one example. So in general, when when you're going up against an, an eco round, you want to avoid giving up guns. You want to fight for those like make sure that those guns don't fall in enemy hands. You want to take less risks, so to speak. Like like looking is like some sort of a risk, right? Because uh, you might uh, drop a gun and then no one can trade you out, or you might die and no one can trade you out. Instead, you more likely want to stay five stacks, and you want to let's say, for example, like you want to abuse your um, your weapon advantage. So when you have phantoms and vandals, ops, whatever, those are all those are all like mid to long range weapons compared to classics, which is really only good when you can like right click somebody. So like going up B-Long is a pretty common strat on, on Bind when your team has gun advantage. Or like say it's like Ascent, uh, Ascent um, like Haven C-Long, right? Or let's say it's like Icebox and you, your team executes B. And so another thing to, to be worried about is that 
um, you want to try to avoid, if possible, getting into close range situations. So, what do I mean by that? Uh, let's go to another map, for example. Uh, let's say Haven. Yeah, Haven's a good example. So, for example, you actually want to avoid going through a short, because you don't know if someone's holding here with a shotgun. You don't know if someone's holding here with a shotgun. It's actually better if you guys all go five men through a long, because this is a really long angle, where if someone's standing here, you can already clear, like, almost all of a long. Right? You just have to worry about someone could be right box. Maybe you can dart it or need it, whatever. And now this is like completely cleared. Right? Any questions for it? Mm-mm. Okay. Or oh, alternatively, like you can just go go see long. Because like you go see long, if you go fast enough, you don't have to worry about cubby. So you just have to worry about someone who's close laps and maybe someone who's like close right. And that's really it. Maybe someone could be on platform, less likely. Maybe somebody could be below platform, less likely. <clears throat> if someone's on site, for example, like, like say this person's like holding a shotgun, maybe they can get one kill on someone who's like pushing this way, kill that person, but it's like less likely that they can escape. Anyone who's like, who's like on site is, is less likely to escape because they're, they're so far away from, from cover. Yeah. Okay. So back to we'll see. Thank you. <clears throat> so for now, I'll just assume that uh, they, they have a full buy because we don't really know how much money they have. I'm gonna TP you. Cover going out. One thing I've noticed right now at the start is that Arvino likes to go alone. And that, that's not necessarily like an issue for you. I'm just like pointing it out there to so for future like information for future rounds. Don't, don't Put you a little, a little bit too behind from this this raise actually. Yeah, you can hear that. I realized it. Yeah, she's already jumping up, and we're still walking here. Actually, yeah, yeah, I was just gonna. I we be careful about spitting though, because that kind of give her the position. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you probably freaked out, but whatever, you choked, it's okay. I'm the bush match. Wish you don't press tab at all. Death man. Do we really no, see no, what no, guns does anyone have? Aim labs. Death man. Good specter, specter, three specters. <laughs> Let me pause here, let me ask you, what are you picking? Um, didn't press tab. Um, we are also five stack again. Okay. What else? Uh, I usually, I know that I play pretty aggressively, even though that I'm a, I'm a sage main, but that's just something I need to work on. Okay. Anything else? Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're right, you guys are 5 seconds. This So far, it seemed like this, what I'm expecting is I was going to go exactly how the second and third round went, where you guys 5 sec and then Brim smokes and now the push is shut down. And what I'm kind of curious about is, like, why you choose to buy a Spectre? What is your thought process? I usually buy what everyone else buys. Okay, so if they buy Spectres, you also buy Spectres? Mm-hmm. Why not buy a Phantom or Vano? Because I think I, like if everyone else saves, I usually will save. Okay, but they're not saving, they're buying specters. So why not buy like a bigger gun? Sure is saving. What do you mean? Like specters are like half buy. Yeah, so it's not it's not a full save, like a full save would just be like just everyone has classics, or maybe everyone just has like deagles. But your team is like buying specters, specter light. So that's like a half buy, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, do the, the shield, the shield, so it does kind of. So we have one shield. Oh, it's kind of hard to say, because I haven't seen the arena yet. But so far, it seems like your team is half buying. Because mm -hmm. you, your team has three specters, and at least two people have light shields. So what I'm wondering is, why not just get a Phantom or a Vandal? What's the reason Would that behind? just be better just to invest a little bit more? Well, I'm just trying to gauge your, your, your thought process. This is not necessarily like a right or wrong answer. Yeah, I think that just if everyone else is like half buying, I will also do Spectre. I, I will never okay. be the one who buys up. Okay, then let me ask you a second question. Why not buy a Marshal, for example? Uh, buying Marshals? I'm not very good at like Marshals and Op. And I don't know. I think those you have to get, like with the Marshal, yeah. you have to get headshots. Mm, and I'm more yeah. good at like spraying. Okay. Okay, so so we're choosing to buy a Spectre mostly just because that our team is buying Spectres, and then even though technically we do have the money to get a Phantom Vandal, we're opting for a Spectre instead. Um, so a couple things I'll say here is that one thing you can do is if your team is half buying, is that instead of buying, because like the main reason to buy a Spectre is if you can um, help guarantee, like let's say if you're playing on defense, then you can more or less choose where your engagements will happen compared to an attack. Like, let's say you're an attack right here, you push through a short, and then you find yourself in a gunfight against someone in heaven, right? And then that's going to be, like, extremely bad for you because you're holding a specter, the other person's holding, like, an actual gun, or maybe even they're holding a marshal. And if they're holding a marshal versus your specter, they're still going to, most likely going to win that, that, that bummy one, or that fight, rather. Okay. So one reason to buy specters, not just because that your team is 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 also buying specters, you know, that your team is like half buying, but you will buy a specter because that you can get yourself into a close range like gunfight. Or you can like try to guarantee that you can get into a close range gun gunfight. So for example, if you choose to buy a specter here, then one thing I would do is that I would actually just like push into showers because showers is like a guaranteed close range gunfight. Until you push out of showers, then then okay, then you might have to fight someone from like longer range from like heaven, or CT, or from like lamps or something like that. But by pushing into showers, like all of showers is, is a close range gunfight. And another alternative, like another option would be pushing to like hookah. Like all of hookah is a close range gunfight. Like those are the fights that you want to take and like try to force with your specter where you have um, better close range like um like spraying power i guess like yeah playing to your gun strengths basically okay as opposed to like just rolling out with a specter and then like without any specific game plan okay and then also too like another reason for buying a specter is that you have higher move speed compared to like a Phantom of Vandal. So that helps in like rotations where like you're more mobile, you can rotate faster. So maybe you're, you buy a Spectre because you're more likely to lurk away from your team. So that's, that's another option for like another selling point for like going showers by yourself or going hookah by yourself because like you can generate value elsewhere and more value elsewhere with your Spectre than five fast stacking here. Even if you're by yourself, even if you're not really that comfortable, like taking what you want or something, just all those factors that like, combine makes it like more valuable. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, actually, what I would actually do in this situation, because we're choosing the five stack, is that I would actually wouldn't buy a Spectre. I would actually buy a Phantom of Vandal, and then what I would try to do is try to get into as many gunfights as possible or rather i would try to get that rifle into as many gunfights as possible so what i mean by this is that when you take a one one with that phantom of animal that's like relatively that's a relatively even fight between you and the enemy and then if you win it great if you don't win it then it's not necessarily bad because now one of your teammates can pick up the phantom of animal and now they can take an even gunfight 1v1 against the enemy, right? So basically, by 
having at least one Phantom of Vandal, like one rifle amongst your teammates, and then getting that rifle into as many gunfights as possible, that can be almost as valuable as like a full team buying rifles, even if they're not fully kitted, right? Does that make sense? So, uh... Yeah, so that's that's another thing to consider if you're if instead of like lurking around, which you would be better if you have a have a specter, then if you're choosing the five stack, it'd be better if you actually had a bigger gun, had a, had a more expensive gun, so that you can share it amongst your teammates. And that's gonna be very easy to do if like you, all your teammates are standing next to each other. Then like whenever someone gets into a gunfight, that phantom can also get to a gunfight. Or if that phantom user dies, then the, the person standing next to him can immediately pick up that gun and start using it. Okay. So let's see how we play this. Reloading okay. for you. Nice. Placing swarm grenade. Bomb body out. Swarm grenade. Cover out. going now. Satchel out. Satchel so out. actually, grenade. if we execute bomb fast, that person who just TP'd you. won't be back. Nice. Placing swarm grenade. Bomb body out. Another thing too is that what we've seen from previous rounds is that um, no one really plays showers, and both times the people who play A site play from uh, Tetris slash Heaven, so that once these smokes go down, most like there's very low chance that someone is playing directly to our right because they've never played there in the past several rounds, and then maybe someone could be playing this, but it's less likely. What I would expect from the enemy team is that someone's going to be playing Tetris, someone's going to be playing Heaven because they've done it so many times. And then, if your team executes fast enough, if you put up your wall, then that blocks off like all those angles like to worry about. Okay. So that's what I'll be looking to do ASAP. And then, basically, because you have a spectator, you want to play around that wall and force close range engagements to happen. Okay. If that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. so let's say. And I'm going back to the... Back to the map again. Okay, so now it's Haven. Going back to find. So I'm, ex I'm expecting a Heaven smoke again. I'm expecting um, whatever same smoke that Omen did last time. If your team pushes and gets control of sites, what I want to do is, is drop wall on truck ACP. And then maybe what's going to happen is that one section of the wall gets broken. Maybe it's like this, whatever. And then what you want to do is force a close range engagement. So either you stand here or you stand here and you look this way or you look this way. So that if an enemy walks through, now this is like a very close range, like 1v1, right? Mm -hmm. What you don't want to do is that a, wall, a section of wall breaks, you stand here and you peek through it. That's what you want to avoid. Because it's longer range, right? Exactly, that's a longer range. You don't know if someone could be like Tetris, let's say like the, the Reina is like Tetris, and then takes a gunfight with you, and then you, there's no way you're going to win that unless you completely hard outplay her. But it is very winnable if you wait for the enemy to push through. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that's why we're looking to tell how to play this round. Okay, so back to VLC. Okay, that just happened. I'm gonna push ACP, push wall plants. Minor tidbit here is that uh, we put the wall down. I would actually peek into the smoke for a split second because actually we don't actually know if someone's in the smoke before we start planning. Okay. Like someone that could be like in front of us right here and then we'd be dead. Mm hmm. But luckily, no one's there. Now we just want to play off our wall. We don't want to go with lamps. Well, we don't actually. We don't want to stand here. Lamps is not necessarily bad, because lamps is another place where we can like guarantee close range engagements, right? Mhm. Mm okay. But uh, yeah, we don't want to be standing here. So let's go. 
Let's see, okay, so your team doesn't really move that much, so that's good. So let's back to the map. Let's talk about positioning. Okay, so we have a wall, but there's a gap in it, like that maybe. And then we have a killjoy in the cubby. We have our rays pushing through the wall for some reason, and she's about to die. And we have our sage is here. Our omen is U-Haul and peeking lamps, or peeking into U-Haul lamps. And we have our Reina. Reina is somewhere here. Oop. Raina is somewhere short, and she's watching flank. Okay, let me ask you, where do you want to position, and what do you want to look at? Uh, since Killjoy is <clears throat> um, in a corner from the wall, we should do like a cross. Okay. Um, thing. So they either do turn to me or turn to her, and then we can just get the pick off of that. Okay, so do you want to stand where you're standing, and then... No, like by the wall. Like, right directly next to her. Okay. Like, in front of her. So, like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. This would be a really good option. Let's see these. How many people are still 5 5 Okay, yeah. This would be a really good option. What other options do you have? Um, I c could go next to Killjoy. To the right of her. Like, next to the box. And just both swing that whenever they go through. So, like, stand next to the Killjoy? No, and like in front of her. Stand in front of her. Like, behind the box. Yeah, right there. Okay. Why here? Because, I think all it cut, isn't it because just, you just have to swing it and then you're close angles too? Uh, yes, but what does this accomplish that this angle doesn't really accomplish? Uh, you can't see the, uh, if they go through. And then you can't tell Killjoy to swing. Before it's too late, before they swing us. I'm not sure what you mean. So, like, if they go through the hole, right? Yep. We can't see that. If I stand by the truck, I'm able to see that, and then I'm able to tell Killjoy to also swing. But if we both stand behind the little box, they'll be able to swing us before we swing them. They'll be able to swing us before we can swing them. Like, if they go through the little hole, right? You... We wouldn't know because we can't see. Because it's smoked? Is that why? No, because because I'm pretty sure the wall is a little bit behind the box, and there's a little gap there. So there's the wall, and then so if they push through the the crate blocks off our sight a little bit. Okay, okay, so I see what you mean. So. So this wall is not exactly flush with the box. Mm-hmm. Instead, the wall is like this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now I see what you mean. And then this part is solid, this part is solid, but then there's a gap. Um, gap like this. And you're saying you're worried about standing here. I'm worried about <clears throat> standing next to Killjoy if I did. So if I stand where, okay. sh where my truck is, I'd... I'd be able to tell Killjoy to swing with me that they're coming through. And then at least yeah. if I die, she'd get the pick. Yeah. I would say that uh, in general, it's hard to palm peaks together, like in, in the heat of the moment. Well, like you, because what's going to happen is that if you're, um, say you're, you're standing where, where this S is, someone pushes through, and then you take this gunfight, and then, then you tell your Killjoy to swing. By the time like your your killjoy understand like understands your comms and then peeks out like this is gonna be like really late. Instead, it has to be like more intuitive where like you just have to like rely on your killjoy to make the right choice, or okay. you come to her beforehand. Like say you get into this position, killjoy's here. You get in this position, and then you tell your killjoy, "Hey, killjoy, play off my contact," right? or in other words, bait me so that she automatically knows that. When someone comes through, takes a gunfight with you, that she should swing ASAP instead of like waiting for your comm. Right, okay. 
So sort of like pre-comming about what's about to happen and what your intentions are. Okay. That you're, you're intending for the Killjoy to play off your contact or you're intending your Killjoy to peak as soon as you get into a gunfight. Yeah. So... What I would say about this position is that it's not necessarily bad, but like one issue is that you're you're double stacked with your killjoy. I mean, it's good that you're you're standing in front of each other so that you're less likely to like if you want to shoot left and she wants to shoot left, you're not gonna block each other. The problem is that if someone pushes through, then takes a gunfight with you, and then uh, like if if you win it or don't win it, then that, like they they can usually like spray transfer to the killjoy immediately afterward or vice versa, right? Compared to if you were standing the, the opposite side, and then you 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 fight this you take this gunfight here, they look at you, maybe they kill you, but then your killjoy peeks out. It's very unlikely that they can one eighty and immediately kill the killjoy. Mm -hmm. So whenever you you're seeking crossfires, you want to be like. Like, um, as 180 as possible. Right. I, I see some of, like, the, um, like, the pro matches where, like, let's say they use their astral wall, they will position themselves, like, across from each other at the ends of the wall. Yeah. That's really good, yeah. So, in general, you want to avoid stacking directly on top of your teammates, if that's possible. Mm-hmm. Okay. So so okay so we talk about these options. What other what other options do we have? Um, uh, you could go um a short cubby, but I but since I have a specter, you shouldn't do that for, since it's pretty long range. Right. Okay. What else? Um, I could go lambs to force the short gun short range weapon, like you said. Okay. More than lambs. Um, to across. Like across from entrance and then to the corner where I guess usually everyone stands. So like to the right here? to the right far corner. So here? No, no, uh, um, right top corner. Here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really strong spot. So this would be another example where like say you're playing this angle, and then your omen is like, like breaking line of sight. Like he's in lamps but not really in lamps. So that if someone Let's say the Reina or whatever was peeking this way, she wouldn't see the omen. Right. right. And I could e either omen or I could swing. Uh, that... If, let's say, like Reina checks me, the omen could also just take a left, like a strafe left a little bit, and then he could see the Reina and kill her. Right, exactly. So let me ask you, what do you mean by if, when, is there any reason for you to swing from this position? So. Well, let's say that she sees Omen first, right? Because like, if you go through, if you go through U Haul first, you you would see the entrance first. Yeah. So Rena's standing see, here. You would see Omen first before she ever saw me. Well, let's say Omen is like he's breaking line of sight from here, and he's standing like here. Okay. So, um, if that point, then no, I would just stay. Yeah. So I would say ideally you would. Just stay in this corner, and then tell your omen that tell your omen to play off your contacts. Same way that in the other situation, you tell tell your coach, "Hey, play off my contacts," because you're gonna make first contacts, and then they can swing as soon as you're in a gunfight. You want to do the same thing with the omen here, where like this Vanna pushes in, and then you take that one one with her, and then suddenly you, your omen swings out and as soon as he hears gun gunfire, then that one one becomes a two v one. And you're absolutely right that if the omen accidentally peeks too early, like maybe he peeks a tiny bit, maybe his elbow's sticking out, whatever, then the Vayner starts shooting at him, then yes, you do want to swing so that you can trade out your omen and kill the Vayner. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So these are all definitely valid positions. What other positions can you think of? Not any other ones besides the one I was staying at already behind the little pillar, which I don't <clears> think <throat> it was a good idea. Besides but thinking, I can't yeah. think, yeah, I can't yeah. think of any other ones. You technically do have two other options. 
Uh, one is to replace Uranus, so to speak, and then your watch flank. I mean, it's like kind of a, a lower value, but it just kind of depends like what gun the Reina has and uh, how how crucial it is to watch flank right now. It's not really that crucial because Reina's watching it and then Kyojin's also got a, a bot here or something. And then your second option is to hard sprint, wrap all the way around Gosharu's. And I'll say that it's a higher risk, but also a higher reward option because your team has not shown any presence in Sharu, so as the enemy team, let's say like someone, the Chamber's in Heaven, the Brim is Tetris, the Rain is pushing lamps or whatever, 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 they jet somewhere, that they haven't shown any attention to Sharu, everybody is, is focused on lamps, or everyone is focused on sight. And by going on this like huge flank to go showers, maybe you come showers, you get a crossfire, not really a crossfire, but you, you catch someone off guard, um, as they're like walking or pushing through the ice, through the wall, right? You get value that way. That makes that makes a lot of sense. The other thing too is that by going showers, someone might TP. And then by TPing, you can like sit here or you maybe like you you TP, they TP while you happen to be like like around here. And then you start walking to this corner, and you you can completely catch them off guard. For example, so you kind of indirectly also watch TP, so that let's say Urena only has to look at at uh, at this flank, and not have to worry about TP flank, for example. Okay. So it also like sort of frees up resources, but yeah, it is uh, it's higher reward, but it's also higher risk because um, what could happen is that, oops, that's not really serious. Uh, someone else a, could also be flanking. Right, exactly. Someone could be flanking this way, and then as you're rotating around, maybe you take a long gunfight because you have a specter and they have like a phantom, and you just lose it. Or maybe you just happen to lose your 1v1, and then now you lost a chance to crosshair of the omen, or you lost a chance to crosshair of the killjoy, mm -hmm. etc. Another thing, another risk too is that maybe the enemy team executes really fast, killjoy dies, omen dies. Your team loses sight control. Now it's just you and Reyna. And now and we're both off site. Yeah, you're both off site and you, you have to fight like let's say let's see if I clear all this. Let's say you made it to showers and Reyna's still at short, but she has like a classic or a, a specter or whatever. And then she probably has to take a fight like this long. Or she has to take a fight this long. Same thing if you were like you have to take a fight, maybe someone's could be at Tetris, maybe somebody could be at truck. These are all like mid to long mid to longish range fights that aren't really favorable to to you arena compared to like a crossfire and you have a crossfire in this this ice wall i think yeah i think the only um situation where i would do that hard flank would be if we had like numbers mm. cuz i in, in my opinion it wouldn't I think it would be better if I, I sat across from Killjoy. Yeah, I think um, it's hard to say because I'm just like presenting it as an option and mm -hmm. not necessarily saying that, yeah, this is definitely the best option or like this is definitely like right. not an option. Just presenting it as, as an option and, it, and, and the trade offs that it, it incurs. And uh, one thing I'll say is that if your team is up in numbers, then actually. You want to take less risks. In general, you want to take less risks and play safer. Mm. Okay. So in this situation, it's like a 5v5, so it, c it could kind of go either way, whether you choose to take the risk or not. Recently, I've been trying to focus on uh, crouching when I shoot, so I don't know if that if that's good or if it won't help me or not. So I'd say crouching is like pretty situational, and probably for now you don't have to like worry about incorporating crouching. It's probably more important to focus on other things. Yeah. Because what usually happens is, uh, in my elo, you don't usually aim for heads, and they just aim for the body, and then 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 if I crouch, then they headshot me. So then that means you shouldn't crouch, right? Yeah. That means you sh shouldn't worry. Exactly. That means you shouldn't be worrying about crouching. 
Okay, any questions so far? Anything you mm -hmm. want to discuss? Okay. All right, let's go back to the video. So we've talked about all the positions. So we know that this position that we're sending here is actually really bad. Oh, Because it doesn't accomplish any of the cost values. So this this kill drag gets to, to a gunfight. Oh, everyone's. And actually, I would actually expect it to die as soon as that flash goes off in your face. Like right here. Oh. As soon as this flash goes off in her face, like someone needs yeah. to be around to to pop it or help her out. Like, I kind of what she did, I think, was a uh, pop it and then the rain a push. Yeah. Everyone's. So she actually managed to kill the rain, which is like actually pretty huge. Then you trade her, which is great. Probably you don't have to reload. <laughs> You still have 19 bullets, you reload, right. you actually could have died here. Yeah, I need to work on that too. Not reloading. Oh, short, short, short. And I don't know about moving. Because, like, it makes sense that um, your, your natural inclination is that you want to avoid this fight with the Sage because you're in the middle of a reload. So here you're actually running toward your Omen. But by running toward your Omen, you're, you're, ex you're exposing yourself to more and more angles, actually. Right, okay. Oh, uh, short, short, short. You fought well. One enemy remaining. Oh, short, short, short. I just keep running into more you, angles. Yeah, you keep running into more angles. Enemy removed. Oh, short. So actually, you shouldn't even be worried about the sage because the sage actually has a shorty. Short, short. So after like. After the initial shot, the initial reaction makes sense. You're, you're worried that she might one tap you or whatever, because you don't know what gun she has. Oh, At this point, you know that she has a shorty. Sure, sure, sure. So, even though that you kill this chamber, you actually don't have to run away from the stage. You can just like kind of stay where you are, mm. and you'll kill her. Okay. Probably don't need to res. But you do want to... So Owen blinds. We don't know where Brim is. He's probably somewhere outside lamps. Could be returning to, to the right side of Chark. And you are, you are watching you. Good job. Is there a wall behind you? Is that why? Because we just we look behind us. And you are, you are watching you. Oh, there's a wall. Next to us. Good job. One thing I would look to do, and it's hard to say because I don't know if there's a, a wall completely blocking you, is I would just go into copy. Instead of uh, like holding this angle here, means that you have to take this gunfight. Right. I, I think I just held it just because I knew he was going to be there. Hmm. What were you saying about ranked up? Yeah, on attack. On attack. You'll buy me. I just have to Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we talk about so far? Play two gun strengths, third point, uh, set up crossfires with your team. Uh, no. My nature um, so far is... This is the moment where I go yep. long with Omen. Okay. And uh, I'm just trying to take notes about what we said so far. Okay. Just have more often. Second thing is... Um, run toward angles that... Are safe. Hmm. Retreat. Retreat toward angles that are safe instead of unclear angles. Okay. Uh, Alright. Thank you. Okay, do we look at enemy. No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. So now I think it's starting to become a bigger issue because I think. I feel like that the enemy team is going to save this round. Uh, and we're not going to be able no. to adjust our playstyle to match. I'm going to go with Coco. Alright. Thank you. <clears throat> so you draw through Coco, she's in her Coco. Oh, he gets one tapped. So you draw through Coco, she's in her Coco. I want to pick this. Yeah. The smoke actually helps you out. As soon as the woman mm -hmm. dies here, so you draw oh, in I wouldn't take this bomb we won. Okay. Because you have res, you can just res Owen immediately. If even if you don't have res, you can wait for your killjoy so that you guys can pick it together. Okay. Get out of my way. Was she 
Right now you could get to 1v1, get one taps, and then Koji will be too far behind to help you. Yeah. Oh, okay, what is this man doing? That's so weird, that would caught me by surprise. It's so weird that she would just like walk peek. This is why walk peek is bad. It was also a classic, I didn't understand why she was sit there. But well, she's probably thinking she wants to right click. Yeah. Which makes sense. The problem is that the brim is like too smoke happy. So the smoke actually helps your team out. Because your team is not really thinking about pushing anytime soon. Your team is thinking about how to get this vez off. And then this Raynard just like walk peaks after the smoke is down. Which is like really bad for her. But really good for you because now that smoke, again, it like it isolates the angles, right? Mm -hmm. Smoke makes your res safe because you don't have to worry about the Chemu peeking from. Uh, from Kabi or somewhere in sight, and also helps this 1v1 with the Reyna because you don't have to worry about sight while you take this duo of the Reyna while she walk speaks, which she also she also shouldn't walk peak. She should have just like swung like full speed full mm -hmm. speed peak. If I was her, I'd wait longer. I think. If I was her, I would I would walk into the smoke. Mm. Because because I didn't so. have angle on her. So let's talk about this because it does become a semi important point where someone could die. So we are pushing B and we're standing here and there's a smoke here. And Arena happens to be in Garden. If we were in Rainer's shoes, we actually don't want to stand here anymore because when people, let's say your team, um, start to push into garden, right? You won't even necessarily like push into garden. What you would actually do is that you would get to this spot here. You stand here. And then that allows you to fight the arena. Mm, okay. Meanwhile, will, you're not ex you're not exposed to cubby or sight or anywhere, right? Okay. So actually it's really bad for Rena to stand here after the smoke is done. Like before when the smoke is like not there, then she can sort of crossfire with a teammate, like with a chamber or something. But once the smoke is there, now that actually helps your team by isolating the angle so that your team doesn't mm -hmm. have to worry about sight. You can just like clear garden and once this rain is dead, now you can push through garden or something like that. Or that you don't have to worry about like someone could be around this area anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Once you clear this, then okay, now we clear the rest. But if a better play for Rainer would be to walk inside the smoke. This is where her right click would really shine because like even no matter what gun you have, your phantom band or whatever, that classic can still one tap you with a right click mm -hmm. very easily inside smoke. So luckily for you guys, she kind of like kind of threw that, and then you guys got a free kill off of it. So that's huge. So let's go back to VLC. <clears throat> Okay, so this is a jet and flank. Or actually, where did, did she die? Hookah. Yeah, hookah. So either hookah or from CT spawn. Okay, so now, now we know that all enemies are in B. Right, so this is exactly the situation I was talking about earlier. Well, like, your team lost someone, like your Raider died, and then you technically lost someone, but you got res, which is not a big deal. Now, you see that the brim is here, the chamber is here, and the jet is also here because the jet just killed the Reyna. So she's either in Hookah or she's in CT, and the chamber is somewhere in sight because he originally killed the Omen. And then the brim, we eventually see brim in the cubby. Right? So let me pause here, let me ask you, what are you thinking? Um, I'm thinking I should just peek him and then get the kill off. Or, or actually, Killjoy, okay. So since Killjoy ulted, he'd have to move from that angle, so I just hold an angle from him. Yeah. Yeah, so two things is that one is Killjoy's ult is going off. So if you just stand there, eventually Brim has to leave that corner automatically. And uh, the second thing I'm thinking is that you're really far from your teammates. And like you could die when the bomb would be dropped in the elbow. Well, like someone could be an elbow, you, you die, and then your team mm. will like, lose control of the bomb. And that person could also pick up your gun, like if someone's in elbow right now. 
So what I would do is like wait for your team to execute, especially if you have bomb, especially if you're playing Sentinel. Let your team I, go in yeah, first. Yeah, I really don't. I really need to stop going yeah. first. Like usually, I will always be the first to enter. If you insist on being the first to enter, don't stand here and like continue searching for a gunfight, like an unnecessary, a completely unnecessary gunfight with this brim. This okay. brim, this brim has to, has to pick you, and if he doesn't pick you, he's automatically gonna get detained and then die eventually. And this whole time that you're entering, you're exposed to so many angles that you don't even look at. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you're exposed to. Uh, let's go to you're exposed to here you're exposed to tube you're exposed to the right side of tube we're looking at the brim and you're somewhat exposed to um blow hookah i mean, also technically exposed to here was this looks like someone would be here maybe jet could be here maybe chimmy could be here like all these angles that your team hasn't really cleared yet, and like you're pushing through smoke, and you have to like clear all these angles like simultaneously, right? Mm -hmm. If anyone was at any of his angles, you could be dead. Okay, so then so next bullet point, oops, let's clear that. Is that as we're pushing through, we're exposed to more and more angles, right? Now is now is a good fight in front of us. Now we're exposed to someone sending a hookah. We're also exposed to someone in an elbow, right? So if your goal is to entry and go first, you want to head towards somewhere that is safe. You want to like um, sort of like leap leapfrog. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the map for example. But that's so weird for the chamber to push up, especially with the killjoy ult. So your team, I didn't that. yeah, your team is like smoked out, but you're insisting on pushing to smoke because there's a killjoy ult here that covers like all of this and maybe more like more of this like right so that uh, you're pushing through and you end up standing here which is like completely exposed to everywhere right oh well not not taking that side but like exposed to cubby exposed to the right side of the tube exposed to window instead when you push in you want to head to somewhere that is safe and then wait for another person to push further, to push off of your spots. So let's say your team is like one, two, three, how many people are here inside garden? And then you push in, let's say you push in and you go left. Right? So now that now you're in here to the left side. And then then you can like for example, you accomplish the same thing of keeping the brim contained inside B copy. And then like the same thing like if you if you peeks out, you take an easy one one where you have a vandal, he has a classic or he doesn't push out, he gets detained, whatever. And then you you wait, you wait, st you stand here and you wait for someone else to push off of you. So that, let's say um, let's say the omen will push into elbow here. Right? When this happens, then someone else, let's say the killjoy, also pushes. Let's say the omen, he pushes and he looks elbow. When this happens, someone else also pushes, looks at hookah. Maybe that could be you, maybe that could be the killjoy, could be someone else, whatever. But you want to like try to leapfrog or set up these leapfrog situations. I see what you're saying. Okay, let's talk about the. It's it's a lot easier for like a another map. Let's say, let's say ascent for example. When you think about like clearing a room because like, bomb site A is like a big room, right? Like this this box is a room, and then and then this is a choke that we're entering. That we're pushing through in entering the room and then our goal when we get inside this room is not to stand in the middle of it right our goal when we push is to um hug a wall like almost all the time you're gonna be hugging a wall so for example the most common thing to do is that you push in and you immediately turn left well not necessarily turn but like you head toward the switch you activate the switch and that closes the door that's right? usually what i do Instead of like just like heading directly in the middle of the site while like like your team is like maybe here and here or whatever or someone sitting in A main, the first thing you sh someone should be doing is like activating the switch. Okay. And then also too, because this all, this all wraps back to like uh, not blocking your teammates, not lining up your teammates. Say for, for example, if someone 
is on heaven, for example. Let's say Lionel Jet's on heaven, whatever. And then she looks at A main. Then if someone, if you're, uh, let's say you happen to be the opposite. Maybe you be, maybe, maybe go right side or whatever, right? Then when Jet peeks A main, now she puts herself into a 2v1 from people in A main plus you, who is not next to A main, or not inside A main, rather. Compare this to um, if you were just standing in the middle of sight. Now you're basically lined up with the people in the main. Same thing if uh, if Jet wasn't on, on Heaven, maybe she was like uh, on Hell or something, or maybe she was on Boxes on Sight, Tetris, or maybe she's Jenny. So when you enter a room, the, the main goal is to set up a Leap Fox situation, or like uh, go switch, you wait there, someone pushes further, someone like pushes to Jenny, then someone pushes to here, whatever. So you set up like these leap fogs, and then once once those people push, then you can also push off the switch. Second thing you, to accomplish is that you want to line up with a teammate. You don't want to be blocking your teammates. It's kind of a less issue in Valent because there's no friendly fire, but it's a really big deal in like actual tactical shooters like CS:GO or Rainbow Six, where like standing next to each other is like extremely bad because like let's say you stand here. And then let's say a killjoy is behind you. This killjoy is like completely useless because she can't shoot without shooting you. And if, mm -hmm. if this jet is like shooting at you, the bullets will just go through you and also hit the killjoy. So it's extremely important in like other tactical shooters. It's less of a big deal in Valorant, but it's still still something to like to be avoided. Okay. Any questions so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, so back to VLC. So we realized that uh, the entering is not necessarily bad. This is like the positioning after the entry. We're like we're exposed to so many angles. We're we could potentially be dead and drop bomb. Enemy down. Huge kill. You also have a third hookah. One enemy remaining. Team Ace. Okay. Good show. Uh, that works fine. Yo, can you Let's see, we actually picked the money. Okay, nice. Great. Now we realize they can fall by. Thanks. I was topped out. What is this guy saying, bro? Can you hear him? Yeah, I turned. You want to play? I barely hear Shadows. You want to play? Let's play. Enemy spotted A. Reloading. Reloading. Yeah, I think I don't know what I was looking at, but I'm pretty sure I was just looking for to heal someone. Because mm. I knew someone would die. Okay, so we just full center to B because B is pretty clear. I wouldn't ice that. Yeah, you kind of killed your arena. <laughs> you realize that, right? Yeah. So like, you it makes if Reina wasn't there, it makes sense to ice because you're like you you want to plant the bomb and not have to worry about someone like pushing for CT spawn. But the thing mm -hmm. is like, based on Reina's body language, she's looking to push CT spawn. Take teleporter. One enemy remaining. I shot him. Pause here. gets two. I shot him. Pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? Uh, so that's why I usually play um, B. I will plant for long and just wait for the tap and then and then just swing out. Okay, so just like hide hide uh, behind the smoke and then wait for a bomb tap? Mm-hmm. Okay, what else are you thinking? I could also be an elbow because that's no I, I know where that he is or I could play on site or play with the killjoy. Okay. Anything else? Mm-mm. -mm. Okay. 
just giving notes. Okay, so in a 2v1 situation, like when your team um, has a number of advantages that generally you want to play safe and generally you want to avoid your team or your other teammate getting into 1v1 or yourself getting into 1v1 while the your other teammate can help you if if possible right so like the way that the the brim is going to win this is if he takes a moment of you and then takes one of the killjoy or, or all the way around whichever but if you if you and your killjoy play together if you peek at the exact same time then it's very unlikely that a brim or any person will be able to win a 1v2 mm -hmm. okay so that's one of the goals the other goal is that we still want to get information as safely as possible, uh, safely if possible, and like information about where the brim is. So this situation right now, we can't really do that without like pushing through smoke. So therefore, it won't be safe. But an option might be if we weren't here, if we were in elbow, for example, then uh, I'm still drawing actually. So we are, uh, oh, this is Haven, oh, this is Ascent, sorry. We are on Binds, B Garden, and we're standing here behind a smoke. If we weren't here, for example, if we were, let's say we were sitting elbow, one thing we could do is uh, come here and like jiggle peek, see the spawn every few seconds. Like every you know three to five seconds or something like that, All right? So the goal okay. behind behind this is just to gain information. We want to see if if the brim is coming from CT spawn because right now we know we don't know where brim is. He could be CT. He could be uh, coming from B short or something. I don't know. He could be well. He won't be TP. He'll heal the TP. But those are the main two main places you would, you would think about. Well, maybe he could maybe come B long, but it really depends. So just for example, if you were an elbow, something you could do is that you would jiggle peek CT spawn just to get information that Brim is there. And it's also really crucial that you don't commit to this 1v1 so that you ensure that you you have full control of your peaks. You don't like wide swing here to what to, to peek into CT spawn because by this wide swing here, you're, you're too far away from this cover, from this corner, that you're now you're really committed to this gunfight. And that would be really bad because now... Now this boom could could win it where he, he kills you, then he kills Killjoy. Alright, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other thing too, based on how our Killjoy positions, is that I might even consider just like standing inside the smoke. So that if possible, like um uh, actually maybe I should go back to the drawing board again. One thing that could happen is that Killjoy, let's say she's like uh, on the boxes here, and she takes a gunfight with the Brim who happens to be standing here, and, and Killjoy dies, right? Meanwhile, you're still smoked out, you're, you're standing really far away from the smoke. One thing you could do is that you stand inside the smoke, and then if this, ha if this were to happen, you can immediately swing out and then kill the Brim. Okay, yeah. So this does require some a little bit of mental juggling or mental timer of like knowing how long the smoke is gonna last roughly, so that let's say the smoke is about to go down, then you're originally standing here, then you walk out and go back to your original spot. Okay. Okay. So actually, change to VLC so you can hear audio. So here, you actually have an option to um, rotate. Like if you were inside the smoke, as soon as the the Killjoy peaks or inadvertently peaks and dies, you, if you were inside the smoke, you have the option of like walking to Oboe, for example. Last player and then flanking behind him, yeah. Yeah, and flanking like behind him or like just getting, getting more options.
Okay, let me pause um, here because now he's Molly. Oh, well, let me ask you what you're thinking. Um, <clears throat> right now, okay, so since I Molly, since he Mollied, I just saw that I walked around the Molly because I thought I would hit like Garden. Um, I would just sit in the smoke until he taps it and spray. Okay, so you're thinking about just spraying through the smoke? Mm hmm. Okay. But since you know, you don't have an accurate read. You could just go a little bit up and then to the left to see more, but then you would be exposed. So, yeah, I think, okay. So since we're on defense, or no, attack, I would just play time and just spray through the smoke. Okay. Makes sense. Would you consider pushing through the smoke? I would, but usually, most of the time, I would just play time, to be honest. Mm, okay. De okay, depending on how much time there is left. Because I, this one, I'm pretty sure there's only like a few more seconds left. I would just buy the time. Yeah. And spray okay. through smoke. Yeah. It's just only as another option. Like you could technically push through smoke, it would just be higher risk. And then... Yeah, because uh, he can't see me either. And it would be harder for him to spray me than for me to spray him, because I would know where he is on bomb. Yeah, the only thing is that he could be like left side of bomb, he could be right side of bomb. So even if you spray, it's it's not a guarantee that he's off the bomb, right? So even then I would I would so maybe consider peeking because the spray is not guaranteed to stop him from diffusing. Okay, so just throwing it out there. And then also, um if you do decide to peek um like through the smoke, then it's important that you peek properly, if that makes sense, so that you you don't want to um, be holding W if possible. Because most com most commonly, like when people want to peek in a situation like this, is that they're just like W through the smoke and then stop and then shoot. In general, you want to be yeah, strafing. I would probably shooting. go to the side. Yeah. Yeah. So see how you play it. Oh, I know. Oh, that's so embarrassing. Yeah, huge brain. Huge brain, yep. <laughs> so that's interesting. You, you, you're you basically forced to peek. And actually, all this could have been avoided if you just weren't in Garden. Because if... By being in Garden, your only option is, is to, like, to stay here, right? But if mm -hmm. you were Elbow, you have the option of wrapping to CT. So like, like even like around here. Smoke goes down. Molly goes off. If you were like wrapping to CT right now, you could like completely walk with your knife out. Then like you could probably like think behind him and, you, and then make this pin look look really dumb. I don't know if I ran that way. I could have just ran backwards mm. and avoided the. Yeah, I guess so. The, the problem is that he'll he'll get it to at least half, maybe even more. Or he might just like stick it and then. Now you have to like completely gamble. So like let's say like as soon as this all happens, I think I would, I would have to peek because if you if you went here, even if, even if you survives, then your only option would be to spray through smoke because you won't have time to like run through the smoke to peek him. Mm -hmm. So then it's like more of a gamble, right? Next time yes. I will uh, one of I will probably check for uh, like an alt and then I'll play off of that. Like play, like play up Like salt. see if if he has an ult, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard in this situation because you don't necessarily know exactly how he's gonna ult. Like he might ult elbow, or he might ult something else, or he might be saving ult. Like who, who knows? He completely guessed, which was a good guess for him. Yeah. It's more so important to to know when Boom has ult if you're playing on on attack, on attack on, mm -hmm. on defense. Sorry. Defense, yeah. So like yeah, if you if you try to defuse the bomb, now you know for sure that he's gonna ult, or like Silver's gonna ult, or like an ult is gonna happen during like when, these post situations. Yeah, when we are on defense, usually if it's like a brim or a soba that's um left, I will usually almost always check for ult. Yep. Yep, makes sense. Deep shorty, bro. He's gonna die. Someone <laughs> ulted way too early. Oh, I'll, I'll push B, actually. Oh, yeah, I'll push B. 
So your omen ults to CT. He baits attention from Brim plus someone else. I think it was Reyna. Reyna. Uh, take it, take it, take it, take it. And then both of those two players were toward bombsite B. So I would mm -hmm. actually just like go B right now. Because like actually it's more guaranteed than A. So it's okay, your team doesn't really realize it, so you just okay, just stick with your team. Okay, okay. So you plant the bomb. Yeah, I know I don't think I know what I was doing then. Yeah, let me ask I'm you. I'm still deciding. Yeah. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? Um, so here, like in game, I'm I was just thinking to wall off uh flank. Um but here, I probably should have just walled from truck to crate and then just played angles. So doing like a default wall, you mean? Mm-hmm, like a default wall, yeah. Okay, why is that? Um, Since no one is usually... Because I don't see anyone on site and they're all CT. Okay. So what else? What else are you thinking? Um, Something else I could do is I could just walk to bath and then get an angle on heaven. Um, but heaven's not important because your omen's in heaven already. Okay. So, unless your omen dies, then right. heaven's not a concern. Yeah, I would probably just wall default. Yeah, so what I would do in this situation is that I would do the first thing you said was wall off a short and then go somewhere else. Probably I would I would go CT swan actually. And uh I would definitely not wall off default. So the the main reason is that your team is playing extremely aggro right now. So that if you oh. if you wall off default and you sit site, most likely you're just gonna be like AFK in site and there's nothing for you to do. Like you're gonna generate zero value for the team while the round is being dictated elsewhere. So you want to avoid okay. that from happening. The round is being dictated right now by your three teammates pushing to CT spawn. Okay. If, if your three teammates die from CT spawn, then the round is going to be lost. But if you help your teammates and ensure that the CT spawn push goes successful, is, or is successful, then your team's going to win the round. Okay. So this goes back to the, the previous one where, like, in general, when your team's playing aggressive, you also want to play aggressive too. Okay. It's a smart ice. Really good timing on the ice. I think you just didn't whip out your gun immediately. You just shoot it for some reason. Good shit. Easy your own. Nice shots, Ryan. Sorry about that, Ace. Reloading. Uh, can someone come with me again? Yeah. yeah. Can I get orb? Um, I <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You don't have to ask, just, just take it. Or if, if you really want an orb, then from like the the, pre, the first two or three rounds, you can just like go showers and get the orb for free. Mm, yeah, I, I think I pulled up tab and I was just checking the uh, or um, all account. Yeah, let me pause here, let me ask you, what are you thinking? Um, so one died on by teleporter. I would probably just rotate. Okay, what else? Um, oh, I could go res uh, Killjoy. Yes, okay, what else? Um, or we could just play and just push in, I guess, and then I would, if we push in, I would drop bomb or either go plant and then go elbow or go wall ct okay and just play off of that yeah yeah i would say going for the res is your highest value play here and that's actually assuming that's what yeah, i yeah. thought you would uh see do immediately it's actually missing the team's money okay great so three of them can buy two of them can maybe force buy so a key component for this round is like to not give up any guns. Mm -hmm. So we check an ice. I'm assuming you're gonna run and get this res. Okay, now it's not safe anymore. Oh, now, 
yeah, as soon as this minute dies, I would turn around. Or I would second guess about full splitting like this. Mm -hmm. also, also, you shouldn't full split the bomb, you should full split before the knife out. So now, like, you have to think about if I really want this res, I have to be ready to fight this sage. And I have to be ready and, like, actually win this fight because if I die, now the, the round is very likely going to be lost because bomb's going to get drops. Now it's going to be like a 2v4. The sage is going to res someone. Right? She's going to, if I were the sage, if she kills you, I would. Fellow Sage, I would uh, rotate around and, and res um, the Jet, or whoever it was. Yeah, Jet. So, go for this play. Make sure you get the kill. Okay, great. I would still stop here. I wouldn't even like peek any further because you know that uh, someone else is here, right? Like someone else kills mm -hmm. Killjoy. Oh, no, man. It was just Sage. No, it was a Sage. Okay. But we don't have information on like Hookah. The rest of Hookah, yeah. yeah. So we don't know that by peeking this deep, that someone could be we could be in a gunfight right now, and so then probably I would probably ask um someone else to go with me then. Yeah, I would ask the Omen time. or Raze, probably okay. Omen because Omen's closer. Second thing mm -hmm. is that Omen can flash into Hookah for you, so okay. that you can uh, you can peek Hookah if you wanted to, or you can just wall it off and then get a res. Okay. No, you can't raise your own other sage. Oh. And you don't want to pick this, because you you want to. I probably to, should have checked hookah first. Yeah, you want to, yeah, you want to check hookah or you want to wall it off, because we don't have a mission that someone could be here and we can get shot at. Someone could be here and we get shot at, and then that person would just get two free kills. Mhm. Mm I would also press tab. <laughs> Tiny detail. I would press tab to see like who is like performing better, or. Who no, yeah, that's 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 I knew who uh, who was performing better. The Reina. That's why I was I was gonna res Killjoy, but then I went to res Reina. Yeah. Other thing to consider too is that if the Killjoy has ult, then even though she's not oh. performing well, then that ult can right. win you the round. Like okay, she, okay. She, she I don't think that's something ult. I ever considered. So okay, so we res Reina. We also don't want to push because now we're. we're Peeking further into Hookah, Hookah's not cleared, right? Like, we could be in a good fight while Reyna's getting rezzed. Mm -hmm. So Reyna's not useful until the next, I don't know, 3 seconds. And then she can has a gun out and can help, right? But here, we peek the entirety of Hookah. We also, not we're not peeking to our left. So, like, we could die, right? And then that person can, like, push up in kill Reyna. Mm -hmm. And then also, the way that we peek here is that we want to... Peak angles one at a time. Here we just we wide swing everything. Yeah, and I should have waited for Reina and then peak crossfired peak or so, you hit her go right and then I go left. Yeah, even if you were by yourself, let's go to a map for example. How would we peak this? I would peak um to the left first. If we weren't yeah, if we were in hookah, I would go to the so far right of that to all the way to the right. Check to the left of hookah. And if it was clear, then I would wide swing hookah. Yeah. So you want to stand the opposite side, like say you stand the right side and then peek left. Mm -hmm. And then then you stand the op left side and you peek right. Mm -hmm. And then you also don't want to like wide swing directly into hookah. You want to try to, when you're peeking, you just, like jiggle left, you go back. You go left, you go back. Same thing on this side. You jiggle left, you go back. You can jiggle left, you go back. So that... You, you're really just gaining information if someone's here or if someone's on top of a box. Okay. Not, not necessarily to commit to a fight yet. Mm hmm Because what you don't want to have happen is that you like you commit to this fight, but then someone's standing on the opposite side, or vice versa. Or you commit to a fight when you can like wait for a teammate to like help back you up. Maybe let's say for example, um. Let's say you were standing here and you just you jiggle left and go back right and you spot someone on top of the box and then you just you realize that they're there they realize that you're there you're kind of at a standstill but you say hey omen omen buddy or pal flash into hookah for me and then i can then i can full commit to this fight after this flash okay happens. okay okay yeah well likewise of reina i just visit my reina hey reina buddy or pal let's flash into hookah for me then i'll swing off your flash mm, okay okay I see what you're saying. 
So don't always think you have to like uh, commit on the first time you peek something. You can always commit afterward. Think about the difference between um, a com more committed peek, like your wide swing, wide swing, or even like a, a short swing to a crouch. Like this would this would be a time that you can use crouch because you're committing. But think about uh, how you can peek for information. So a, a shoulder peek or a jiggle peek or even a jump peek. Maybe just if you're worried about like an opera or something, maybe an opera is for, for whatever reason, it's like it's, it's standing on top of the box. It's like Jet's on, on the box and she has an op. And then you're like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna jump peek this just for information, just so I can see if someone's there and then get out immediately because I'm not really okay. committing. Okay, so back to you'll see. Definitely, definitely don't white swing like this. And definitely don't enter your fault your team. Definitely wait for your res. Your duty is not over. Reloading. Do you know where they're at on site? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. We know they're both here. Area created. Did you? Spike planted. For you. They're coming through heaven. One enemy Our remaining. Killed. So, I'm gonna go back. So. We plant the bomb, which is great. Yeah, so like, let's say this point right here, I know that my flank would be clear because those yep. two just came from it. Yep, makes sense. Actually, what I would do, this is more of a greedy play, is that I would actually go showers and get the orb. Instead of like, planning immediately. Mm -hmm. There's like, something to be concerned about, is that, uh... We hear Reyna, we hear... I assume someone, like an enemy from Elbow, like an op. Do you know where they're at on site? Mm, well, I guess we don't look that woman. You know they're both here. Well, like, being greedy, get the orb, then you can plant. So you, okay. you maximize the value from this. Also, when we really wall CT, I was just like, plant immediately. Did you? So one thing about walling CT is that um, if the enemy team like goes heaven, you, you you don't have the option of like flanking through CT anymore. And I think if if you were gonna burn wall, I would burn wall in heaven because that's a higher value wall than CT. Okay. So what I would expect to happen is that if the enemy team they're like rotating from CT, they see the wall, they just break the wall immediately, right? And then there's well, so like since I walled vertically, they'd have to break through a lot to go through CT. I guess that's true. I think it's more so like you just they're slowing them down, but not necessarily like making them walk through another choke. In general, mm. with walls, you want to try to accomplish both at the same time. Well, like you're not only like say you do a heaven heaven wall, you're not only slowing down a heaven push, but if someone were to push from heaven, they have to like walk through a choke, like a completely okay. death trap of a choke. Yeah, well, it's not a huge deal for now. Something to think about is that we want to be peeking with our team here. So this whole time that... Uh, right here, Reyna is peeking to heaven. And one run could happen. There's also no point in us peeking lamps, because nobody could be in lamps. Like this peeking to lamps is kind of pointless. No one could be in lamps. The only, way, the only place an enemy can be right now is, is heaven. Mm-hmm. And this whole time that your your team is like rotating around, your rain is watching heaven. Your rays is, is like really exposed to heaven while she has her knife out, and she's full sprinting toward heaven. That what I'm worried, what I'm worried about is that someone picks from heaven and kills your rays. Now at this point, I actually would not pick heaven here, like right here, because now you're the 
first contact, if someone were to come from heaven, you would get into a gunfight with them, but your team would not necessarily be able to help trade you. Mm -hmm. So like where your, your race is positioned, the enemy would have to drop from heaven to hell, and then she can get to like, like a gunfight. Then she has to hang on them. Unless the race like moves further back, like if the race walks toward, uh, let's say, Shawis, for example, then she can like get the peak or get the angle on heaven. Okay. So right now, you're actually in a possible 1v1 where your team can't help you, based on where your Reyna and your Rays are positioned. And this is kind of the same thing, but it's actually a bit safer because like you have a really tight angle. So that's really good. Just be careful not to commit too high to it. Yep, and this was the issue of the, the CT spawn hope the CT spawn wall was that now your is like, oh I wanna flank I know this guy's heaven, I wanna flank CT spawn and make sure he's not able to see his gun. But uh okay, look actually the wall just broke, so that's lucky. <clears throat> oh he wasn't even heaven. What the heck? He probably was heaven when he, he ran back to save. But it's possible that your your walls your walls slow down your arena's lurk. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying now by um just walling heaven yeah. instead. So you see that boom is heaven, and then if I were the arena with the race, I would just like leave hell because it's very unlikely that Brim would like try to defuse here. It's more likely that he's gonna try to save. So if the wall wasn't there, I can like full sprint to CT spawn and cut him off, make sure he can't save his gun. Okay, yeah, I I see what you're saying now. <laughs> Rusty got outfragged yet yeah, again. It's Waltz. Yep, just break it as really soon as possible. Right. Could be a fake. Um, I don't think it could be a fake because of uh, defense. Um, oh yeah, actually it could chambers. Cause, cause chamber, because chamber. chamber TP. Although I think maybe you'll heal heal the cheap TP. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, don't walk with you. Don't run if you're over out. So here, life is out. Great, you're perfectly safe. And then your orb is out, but it's not necessary because you don't necessarily know that it's smoked. So you technically sort of dry peaks this angle with your orb out. Grab your orb. You orb. I, I, I think that was when I wanted to give it to Killjoy. Let's see, if she's grabbing the orb, you don't have to peek this. Actually, you shouldn't peek this because while she's getting the orb, she can't help trade you. So okay. instead you should hold a more tighter angle or or at least be less committed to this angle so that you still cover the killjoy but you don't find yourself in a 1v1 that okay. the killjoy can't help you tiny tidbit here is that if your goal was to hold this angle, so let's go back to drawing to screen. If your goal is to hold this angle here, then I would move more to the left so that you you don't see too much of this side here. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that way you'll, you'll also be closer to, to cover so that you can break line of sight much faster. Okay, back to you'll see. Like nice, good, good, good trade. Unlucky. Unfortunately, the omen really should have smoked. Or maybe you guys could like coordinate with your omen, because like mm -hmm. before your team like can actually execute on this. Your team needs to like have a smoke 
either like on CT or on elbow on both. So you get this good trade. I think uh, you just look in your counter shaping a little bit. Because like you look where your, your first bullet went. Yeah. The, like, the first three bullets. Kind of sloppy. Yeah. yeah, your first three bullets are just like all over the place. Because you're just you're just moving while you're shooting. And then Killjoy dies to elbow. Because Omen didn't smoke. Spike down B. So so far just a coordination issue. Uh, actually, another thing too. This ice. Can you want to use ice to like help isolate angles? And the backside, like towards CT, is not necessarily an angle to to worry about. At least not now. It'll be an angle to worry about later as your team gets further onto site. So, okay, so I should uh, like ice like an um, angle ice that someone would push me from. The left side. Left or right? Okay, yeah. Left side of tube or the right side of tube. Okay. So that when this you kill this, this this sage, and actually, if you had an ice there, like to the left of the tube, then the chamber, the chamber wouldn't, wouldn't have pushed. Yeah, yeah, chamber wouldn't have peaked. Could be better. Placing alarm bot. Spawn, just want to break the wall immediately. You're fully, you're peeking into a short by standing here and you're looking at the map. Yeah, I'm very vulnerable. You probably want to isolate a bit deeper than that. Just heal, just heal. Weird bomb bot. You can reload, you can heal. Heal me? Yep. Just use it. You'll have it back in another 20 seconds if you use it already. I'm kind of stingy on my heals. Oh, this is so deep. <laughs> I, yeah, that's the moment I realized I did not have bomb. Is that why you pushed so deep? Because you didn't have bomb? <laughs> Yeah, I think I just panicked. If you realize that you didn't have bomb, then you just just wall this immediately. Now you get to this point, I would just like wall wall the truck to the like the default wall ACP. Uh -huh. Alright, defense. Team a bitch. Hey. Let me ask you, what are you thinking with this wall? So that's how I usually normally wall. Instead of walling just straight forward, um, I do more of a vertical wall because either way they they uh they break it, they have to w walk through that my my uh crossfire. But it is probably too long of an angle to hold. And yeah. I could be closer and just right-click them. I mean, like the position that you're standing in right now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, for now, let's talk about the wall placements. We, we wall kind of diagonally. And you say you want to wall diagonally because uh, they have to break more sections of it? or No, they... so like, let's say they break any section, right? They yep. have to go through, one, like, it's like a tighter fire point, I guess, like a tighter viewpoint. Okay, so like if they click a section and then walk through it, it becomes a tighter angle for them to walk through. Like, yeah, they have to go through, I don't know, I saw yeah. it on TikTok. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Um, what I'm kind of thinking is that there's two other things that you want to accomplish with your wall, if possible. Um, one is that you want to make it uh, risky for the enemy team, if possible, to break your wall. So what you don't want to have happen is that you place your wall somewhere and then you place it in such a way that someone can easily just walk up to it and then just knife it. Or someone can just like stand at a distance and just shoot it down completely without worrying okay. about anything else. So where else would I place that where they couldn't just walk up and knife it? Where they can't just walk up and knife it? Mm hmm So in general, you want to have a wall. So like, uh, let's go to drawing.
in general, you want to place a wall in such a way that you they have to worry about someone possibly standing on top of the wall. That's how you get them to second guess whether they can actually walk up and knife it. So mm, here the it's like a normal right. horizontal one. Let's see, the like here your wall is kind of like toward cubby, so it's actually walled like this, right? And then what I could do as enemy is that I could stand here and then knife this section. Then I move to the right, knife this section. Then I move to the right, knife this section. This whole time, I'm breaking two, three sections of the wall and I'm completely safe. I'm completely isolated because I don't have to peek lamps. I don't have to peek sight or, or heaven anywhere, right? I just have to worry about if someone's in cuppy and then maybe maybe like like close cuppy. Like this is the only angle I'm really worried about. And I can find out as soon find out that find that out as soon as I break the first section of the wall. Right? Mm hmm So if I was enemy let me see that's exactly how would how I would deal with your wall and soon like your, your whole wall would just be gone. But if you place your wall like this, for example. This is like a very standard wall because yeah. we don't know if someone could be like you you could be standing on this section of the wall. And then if I were the enemy, and I'm like, oh I want a wall, I want to knife uh, this section or whatever, and try to break this, someone could be on top of the wall and then just like swing and then now I'm dead. Okay. And get right clicked or something. I think okay. What I don't like about that is that all the other enemy team would be there and they'd watch up top. And then I just die. And out without getting a pick off. Mm, true. So you don't want to do this like every single round or every single time that someone's shooting at your wall. You just want to present it as an option or as a threat. Okay. Right. So like they ha they have to have someone watching the top, or they have to be worried that someone could be on top. But if you wall this way, now there's no way that someone could be on top. Because right? this is like the the other side of this box here. And therefore, if I was the enemy, I only have to worry about someone could be cubby, then okay, I can break this, I can break this, I can break as much as I want, basically. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm isolating my angles from lamps or sight. Okay, so let's go through another another choke, for example. Let's say, uh, for whatever reason, the bomb is dropped on B-short. The bomb is dropped here. And then we know for whatever reason that the enemy is in like we have one or two people on link. Okay? And we want to wall it. So instead of like walling like dagger like this, right? Where they can like they can break it very easily and they don't have to worry about someone standing on top of the wall. A standard wall would be walling like this. Now this is actually even better than, than the A short wall because now someone could be on the left side. Someone could be like a Someone could be on the left side, or someone could be on the right side, like on top of the wall. Mm -hmm. And now, if someone like comes here and and like they they stand here, they start shooting at the wall, or they get up close, they start knifing the wall. Now it becomes more difficult because they don't know if they should look at the left side or look at the the, the right side, or like top left or top right. And so now you have more options, and, and more options is more better. Okay. Yeah. Spike down A. Spike, watch tower. So that's what I'm talking about. So where if they peek, there's only a small angle from them to peek for. And they can't move left and right. Okay, makes sense. So like like if the wall was horizontal, right? And they get on site, mm -hmm. they could either go right and then like back to like short yeah i mean yeah it makes sense it's just that you have a trade-off with that with their um they can like break the wall m much more safely mm -hmm. to the other okay. type of wall spike watch tower and like if the any team was like better they would just break the entire wall and then commit to an execute or something like that instead of like most most players most teams will just break one section and like okay it's it's broken we can walk through it but smarter people would just like break as much as the wall as safely as possible and then like execute or like a okay yeah another thing too is that if your goal is to like hold this thing yeah you should hold it tighter here it's just like kind of wide 
Like, if you look where your cross is compared to the box you're standing next to, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty wide. Spike down a. And then here, like, yeah, you make it tighter, tighter, tighter. Which is what you want. So that now you're closer to cover. Spike, watch out. And you're still accomplishing the same thing, but you're safer. Oh, oh shit. Spike down A. Spike, watch out. Also, something to consider. As soon as you hear a bomb drop and then rain makes contact, is that I might even consider, and that's saying this is the best option, I might consider pushing to showers. And then by pushing to showers, you gain so much so much stuff. Where you gain information that they're not showers, you gain map control, you gain access to a flank, you can flank behind them from showers to a short, you free up resources for your raise, your raise doesn't have to watch showers anymore, now your raise can just cross right with your Reyna. For example, so throwing that out there as, as an option, mm -hmm. and of course it's a higher risk option because you know that they're A, but you don't know if they're showers. By pushing into showers, you might find yourself into a wobbly one, so you have to be like really careful about dying there. Okay. Spike, watch shower. Oh shit! I should have just needed that shit. Maybe backed up too far because showers was not clear. I okay. I thought someone was watching showers. Like Ray's right there. He's watching yeah, he showers. Yeah, he was. Spike, watch. But then right there, he turns around. Shower. Even then, you don't necessarily want to back up this. Um, I mean, like it's hard to say because like it's not necessarily a bad thing that you backed up this far. It's like a normal thing that you want to back up as much as possible. Mm -hmm. It's just that in this specific situation, it's bad because no one's watching showers. Oh shit. Well, like, uh, you only need to you only need to back up this much. That way, you you're safe from issue, but you're also safe from showers at the same time. Okay. And then you back up further and further. And now you're exposed to showers, oh, and then you're probably gonna die. Oh, so the main thing was that yeah, your your race should have continued watching showers for you. But Last it's, it's a awareness thing about like if my teammate is not watching showers, then I should make sure I don't expose myself inadvertently to showers. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We got two Wait, specters. And uh -huh. Omen has some pistol, nah, maybe Deagle. Okay, so we have four specters. Okay. Let me pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? Um, to get an orb. Okay. What else? Uh, to see if anyone is pushing showers. Okay. And if, and then if they are, then I would just wall it. Okay. What else? Um, since showers is a, uh, I would think, depending on where you stand, showers would be a short range weapon fight okay um but that's it that's what i'm thinking okay let me ask you why not buy full utility because we were saving again <laughs> okay i'd say in general yeah you want to buy like all your utility or unless like you have like some specific reason where, like i don't know you're saving for an op or something or you're saving for a rifle next round whatever but utility is like so important and even if you die, you still keep your utility, so you can keep it until next round. So most of the time, you just yeah. buy full utility. Okay. Yeah. So the other thing you said that you're pushing the showers. Yeah, it's close, close range situation. It's exactly what you want with respect to. The only thing I'm worried about is that if you find yourself in a gunfight, you'll be by yourself, right? So mm -hmm. against an eco round again, that the way that the enemy team wins eco rounds is by um, taking like these isolated fights, winning them, and then snowballing that into more and more guns for the enemy team and so like if you die you give up a spectre right mm -hmm. so this is not necessarily bad that you're going for the orb it's good that you're you're playing somewhat aggressive to like if the, like the enemy team doesn't go away you can basically get the orb for free just be cautious about like if someone is like um waiting outside showers or maybe a bunch of people are like pushing to showers that you don't necessarily commit to that fight by yourself Right? Mm hmm Yeah. And the second thing is that you said that you would wall it as soon as you see someone. I wouldn't do that because um, one thing is that 
there's no way for you to wall showers where well i guess you can, you can like kind of wall it inward but like you can like kind of protect the wall right because like what's gonna happen is that they're just gonna dump a bunch of bullets into your wall maybe they knife your wall and then your wall doesn't really do that much the other thing too is that by walling off showers you give up control of showers so that they can basically get the work for free mm, and as okay. yeah, on eco round like they're looking to get Whatever value that I can get besides actually winning the round, where it's like, oh, I can get free ultra work, yeah, I'll take it. I can get free control of like B showers, I'll take it. Okay. So I would probably save the wall or maybe use it for a short, which is like m much more guaranteed value. Okay, so that's how you play it. Smoke. Okay, two things. Okay, three things. So, if your goal is to get in the showers as fast as possible, you can actually walk up with your knife until you get to... Until you get to, like, this corner. Then you whip out your spectre, right? Because, like, from here, there's no way you can get to a good fight. No way you can get to a good fight. No way, no way, no way, no way, until now. Maybe somebody could be here, right? That's the time you whip out your specter. This is the time that you whip out your specter. Someone could be here, someone could be, someone could be here, right? So to min-max things, like, use your knife to get to places to make rotations faster. That's spell point number one. Second thing is that just because you don't see anyone doesn't mean that someone is not showery. Someone could be waiting outside, waiting for the orb tap, which is exactly what I would be doing if I was like on an eco round and like trying to steal someone's gun. So what I would do is that I would tap the orb first, then wait like a couple seconds, and then see if someone peeks me. Okay. And then if I know for sure that no one is here, then I commit to get, grabbing the orb. Or maybe I'll, I'll do this tap like a couple times or whatever to be like really safe. Okay. The third thing is that when you're peeking all this, you try to, I'd say you want to be, try to jiggle a bit more because... You don't want to find yourself into a gunfight. Okay. Well, like a committed one anyways. You also don't look behind you. Keep your cross here. Where the enemy might be, like here. Great. Mm -hmm. Turn it on. No. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Good orb. See, if you had another slow, you could toss two of them. You would have a second one. So that was a really good timing if you push there. He's in the smoke on side. Reloading. And nice job. Good job. Good job. He's in the smoke. So he's always inside smoke. We don't know that if he could be back sight, or he could be right side of tube. So this is where like having a second uh, ice wave would be really helpful. Where like I can ice the right side so that I can only worry about the left side. Hmm. Okay. Because, like, right here, while we're spinning to this, we don't, like, Rana could peek from the right side and we'd probably be dead. Okay. Oh, I lost. I'm fucked, really. Smoke speed. I'm waiting until they U tilt once. Okay, let me ask you, what are you thinking? Okay, sometimes um, on random rounds, I will like to flank because sometimes I just get kill hungry. Okay, what else? But um, probably as a sage, I should not flank, like maybe almost near ever. Um, I should just rotate backside. And if I were, okay, I should check the far left corner, like immediate left. Yep. So I hear you're exposed to left. Yep. And then if I walk through that again, I would should check the left again. Yep. Yeah. So I would I would say that the look is definitely a great idea because what is this? This is the the third round. You guys are bonusing. In general, when you guys are bonusing or you're an eco or you otherwise you have like lesser guns than the enemy team, those are the rounds that you actually want to take risks. So this is okay. the round that you actually do want to like. Like if the opportunity presents itself. Okay. So even at sage. Even at sage, yes. Okay. Okay. 
I mean, it's obviously suboptimal as Sage, it's better if you were someone else, but... Um, yeah, cause you, yeah, sometimes when I play and I lurk, people always yell at me because I'm Sage. You just have to, like, do it when, when the reward is, like, high. Or, or at least when the risk is, like, lower. Mm-hmm. So, because normally... The issue, yeah. the issue that they have is that uh, they don't have heals, then. Yeah. So, normally, it looks are, like, high risk, high reward, right? But mm -hmm. in this round, if you guys play normally, you're just going to lose the round anyways. So, you should take risks to maybe steal a gun. Maybe you can gain information. Maybe you can gain map control, et cetera, et cetera. Gotcha. So, okay. for example, like what I said before, like, if you push to a short, you can gain information that they're not a short, which frees up resources for your raids and mana to rotate early, or frees mm -hmm. up your, your wall so you don't have to burn wall at the start of the round, et cetera. Right. And you gain map control, like maybe you gain access to a flank, maybe you can flank behind them, and then maybe the chamber doesn't put a trip properly, et cetera, et cetera. You punish the enemy team, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, so like so many good things by, by gaining from looking. So all these like good reward, the, the risk is that you might die, or your team loses Loses uh, sage shields, etc. Whatever. So I would say, look, good idea, in this, especially in this situation. Just that the way that we do this look is a bit uh, too risky. It's like when we're clearing angles, we want to like stand the opposite wall and then look the opposite side. So we're okay. here we're looking right. We want to hug the left wall so that we're not exposed to the left. And then when it comes time to, okay, we're going to push through this, then well, we're going to pick the left side, then we hug the right wall, we pick the left side. Okay. So in general, you want to be hugging walls. I'm waiting until the util once. Like someone could be left, could have been dead. And then at this point, we should come to our team, A is clear. Because you haven't heard anything A. And then unless okay. like someone is like walking shadows, which is unlikely, then like A is like completely clear, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So yeah, I would come to, come to my team and then even come to this raise. Come to this raise, hey, just like rotate, just rotate right away. Second thing to come to your team is to tell your teammates at B to stay alive, play slow. Tell them that you're flanking behind the enemy team. Okay. So whatever they can do to stay alive, maybe stall their push, whatever, is going to be like huge. Okay. Okay, I'm going. And then also in their situation, if you were in their shoes, like if you were the Lorraine and the woman with the Killjoy, uh, let me ask you, what would you do? Lorraine, woman, or Killjoy? Okay, so Killjoy is, uh, I guess, getting into a fight. I, I personally wouldn't hold that angle, I think. I would hold just a little bit to the left. Um, okay. Omen, I would smoke Kuka. Okay. And Killjoy, I would use her util, and then Rain would probably flash to make the enemy team think sec uh, like a second think about um pushing okay what else uh, <clears throat> push up a bit more because they're kind of giving um b a little bit because they're just kind of backside okay what else um, i'm not sure okay if you were the reina what would you do besides the flash Okay, um, take a- oh, swing to get the other Reyna. The enemy team Reyna, to help Killjoy out a little bit. So instead of like, entering at the site, like, uh, like right here, he enters at the site, just go to Abo and help Killjoy? Oh, uh, no, so, since I didn't know the jet was there, I would just swing- oh, no, I wouldn't swing that, because then you'd make, your own, make yourself vulnerable to other enemies on site. I don't, I'm not sure what I would do as Reyna. Okay, so in this situation, if you were the two or three people defending Bumpsite B, you know that this is going to be a B hit for sure, and you, you have a teammate, your team, your Sage is like lurking behind them, so that's even more information that yes, this is like, at, like most likely the whole enemy team, all five of them, are executing B right now, because Sage has cleared out short, and she hasn't heard anything at showers, and then, um... Probably what I would do is that I would look to just play retake and wait for our sage to catch up. Maybe maybe when our sage gets to either B Long Garden, which is kind of a longer flank, or or hookah, then lots of time to like retake together as a team. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless I can like get a kill like like this omen right now, 
is like somewhat playing aggressive. Like he's like trying to hard hold, hard commit to site by staying on the right side of tube, which is like really far away from like um, getting to CT spawn, for example. So he's like more committed to holding the site compared to the Killjoy, for example, who's more committed to holding elbow. So mm. I would say in general, trying to hold elbow is more important than holding site because by keeping control of elbow, your team has another angle to retake site with. Okay. So yeah, if I was Dovena, I would... It's kind of hard to say because Omen shouldn't try to stay site for too long. Mm -hmm. I would probably go to help kill Joy because elbow becomes more important later on. Then okay. holding site like site is eventually going to fall. If you just want to stall and wait for the sage and wait for the rays to catch up. And okay. then you guys can all retake together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then your job for now is just try to get behind them as fast as possible. And uh, the way that you do this is that you sort of play like a red light, green light type of game. If you ever play that. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that, so you, what I mean by is that you want to speed up your play or speed up your look. In this case, your, your looking is your play by, let's, let's say you can full sprint or you can walk with your knife out or you can walk with your gun out, right? So you have varying levels of speed, which is like varying levels of risk. You're right. right. So when you have information about where the enemy is, or like you, there's a bunch of gunfire, or like the enemy is like, like too busy in a gunfight, or too busy doing something else, right? They're they're distracted pull up by my knife. Yeah. Then you want to speed up your look. You want to pull up your knife if you know for sure that this place is all clear. Like you can, you have more leeway to like speed things up. Okay. But let's say for example, if this execute was not happening, let's say if they were just like poking, and and, uh, I would shift walk and stuff. Yeah, you would like you would clear angles more. You would you would completely shift walk with your gun out, for example, be ready in case like an enemy is like looking behind them, right? Those kind those kinds of things. So that's like a red light, right? Mm -hmm. But when the enemy team like let's say they get spotted on site, they're already on site, they're already executing, or they're in a gunfight with the omen, or already in a gunfight with the killjoy, then that's that's more of a green light where you want to like speed things up if possible. If, if safely as possible. Hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> that makes a lot more sense. But yeah, it all kind of really depends. It's, it's hard to give like a hard and fast rule because there's sometimes that even though the execute is happening, you still want to play slow because maybe you're worried about someone is like purposely waiting behind to watch for flank or whatever. Or other times where you're not comfortable with the risk, like like someone could be waiting behind and then you want to speed things up, but you can't. So it's hard to give a definite, definitive answer. I think it always depends on the situation. <clears throat> okay, any questions so far? Mm-mm. Okay. So another thing too, is that while you're clearing these angles and while you're, we're doing this look, is that you're also keeping eye on the minimap and also any, any audio cues so that you know whether you can speed things up or if you sl should slow things down. Until the util once. And then by... In order to do this, it's like you... Uh, what's the word? Like, um, you look for mini opportunities to like glance at your, at your minimap safely. Right? Okay. So like here, you you can sort of half look at your, your crosshair and half look at the minimap. It's sort of when, like when you peek new angles that you haven't cleared before, like you're clearing this angle, this is the time like you're across here, look at your across here, look at your across here. Okay, it's all cleared. Great. Let's go back to look at my minimap. I'm waiting until the look at minimap, look at minimap, one. look at minimap, and then okay, start to look at your across here again. I'll clean something new. Clean something new. Clean something new. Okay, great. Back to the minimap. Take a quick look. How's how's things looking? Okay, this is a flash happening. Okay, great. And then back to the cross here. Clear the left. Okay, okay, we didn't clear the left, never mind. Okay, so now we decided to full sprints, which makes sense, because now they're already on site. Makes perfect sense. One more backside. We still should clear angles, though. <laughs> no, so I saw two of them. So two people died, I think, and then yeah. I saw both of them were two backside, which is what my team said. Yeah, so, yeah, the red light, green light is 
was played right. It's just that you didn't uh, look Checking left. Yeah, you didn't look left, look, look right. You didn't look to the box to your right. You didn't uh, look to your left here. Look, look to your right here. One enemy remaining. Last one off. Front of the oh, wall. the wall's not for me. <laughs> One more back Something I would say is One that uh, as soon as you see the last person, like you know where the last person is. Yeah, on the mini map. Yeah, you Which can you can just like rotate around and make sure he doesn't escape. Last one, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Because like one option he has is that he can like rotate, go back, uh, go back to T spawn or something, and go back to A. Note down your observations, then let's run it again. See, at this point, I I, I think mm -hmm. I, sh I should have just bought more, right like bought a Vandal. Why is that? I, like, I still have the Spectre, and I definitely have enough money to buy a Vandal or Phantom, but I don't know why I just kept the, fan the, the Spectre. Well, it's, a, it's an economy thing, right? Like, you could buy, invest in a Phantom or Vandal, and then die. And then now you lost the, the money from a Phantom Vandal and the Spectre. Yeah. As opposed to like bonusing again. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to just bonus, but then full shield. Yeah. It depends like what kind of a uh, play or play style that you have. For me, I'm like I'm, I'm extremely frugal, where I would just like keep bonusing gun until like until well, the whole team's like max money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause I just don't want I don't want money to go to waste. I don't want guns to go to waste. And then even if you have a spectre, because it's, especially because it's defense. It's not necessarily a bad thing because you can do things of a spectator that you can't otherwise do with a fan with Vandal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, for example, like going on a lurk is like better with a, with a spectator because you have faster move speed, or uh, playing close range angles is better with a spectator because you can like spray much faster compared to a fan with Vandal. And also, you can play in riskier positions because, like worst case, you die, you lose the the spectator, whatever. Compared to if you play that same position with a Phantom Vandal, now it's really bad because now you give up a Phantom Vandal to the enemy team. Okay, okay. Okay, just take some notes here. Okay. Let's, run. Let's see, what is the enemy economy? Everyone no I, guess, I guess we don't look at it. So I'm going to assume make sure yeah, yeah. to look at it more. Yeah, definitely press tab a lot. Okay. So based on the previous one, I'm going to assume that the enemy team is on an eco or they're on a half buy. So that uh if you had a family vandal, it's crucial not to lose that to enemy team. And it's important to try to play with your teammates so that even if you die, your teammate can help deny that gun to enemy team. And the second thing is that uh um, becomes like higher risk to to go on lurks or go play like a close range angle or whatever. Like let's say you went deep into showers, you play like some one and done angle in front showers. It's higher risk to play that with a Phantom of Vandal because you might lose that gun again compared mm -hmm. to if you played it with a Spectre. Okay, yeah. So yeah, this one, I would say look to play to your gun strengths and specifically look to play to your Spectre strengths. So look for an angle that you can play that's close range or look for opportunities to go for a lurk, etc. Mm -hmm. So even something I would consider is that uh, for the past two, three rounds, they've been hard executing each site almost almost alternatively. Make sense? Alter alternatingly? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the two rounds ago they executed A, the round before well, the last round they executed B, so this round I would almost expect them to like execute A again. So one thing I would even consider is just I would just like play B and then push to B along. Oh, okay. So something to consider. Another option I would do or uh, consider is that I would push into showers because I can help guarantee like a close range angle with my Spectre. Okay. Okay, so let's see how you play it. Okay, never mind. Looks like they do have guns. Like the slow is coming oh, early because it's, it's less likely that they're already pushed up to this gap within like those two three seconds. I will probably wait for more sections of the wall to break or wait for confirmation that someone is in cubby, then I would ice it. 
And you can okay. ice it like um, from cover or something. Oh, you tall now. Three A side. Spike, Spike dropped there. Spike okay. I'm coming to play heaven. Yeah, with this guy with this visit pop arena. Oh, you tall. Oh, you tall now. So one issue of this, Three. again, this is another white swing, is that while you're holding this angle, this raise can't actually help you. So if someone peeks right now, like, Spike dropped like, Spike like right yeah, now, he wouldn't be able to see her. Right. So this is like one run that you don't want to take. Okay. For two things, she can help you, and this is like a longer range fight. Mhm. Mm so if you were holding this angle, you should hold it close. You could like, you should like hug your wall, and play close. Okay. I'm coming to play heaven. Other thing too is that Urena has been Three. playing really aggressive. If she's pushing to Shara's, she takes a gunfight. Oh, you now. Three A side. Spike drop there. Spike A. Then Chamber TP's out. Now Reyna's like really pushing deep. At this point, I would consider just like giving up a right. Let the uh, let your team handle it, cause like at this point, you have Rays, Three A side. Lamps. She's Spike. like more than enough to like kind of slow things down. Like it's it's less likely that the enemy team would would be able to to four men pushed onto site while raises and lamps and you also have your killjoy and omen coming within like the next five seconds or whatever so i would say in your position i would go help the arena acp okay drop there okay i'm coming to play heaven nice shot. probably also get a free orb too if you go showers but now she's pushing more and more she's cleared it all uh, this, what is like Destroying uh, uh, Uto on, on B. B. Seems like they're on Five B already. Look on Uto. This is really high risk. This is Uto really high risk B. because, like, uh, I mean, it makes sense you want to do this. Look on Uto. That you want to ice and slow down the push and, like, have another angle to come from. The problem is, like, all these angles that you have to clear are mm -hmm. not favorable to you. Like, these are all, like, long range angles, like, from inside the TP. Planted. To hookah is like too long of a, of a fight that you want to take with a selector. And then like right. from B short to bottom of B short is like too long, right? So that's what I mean by risk. <laughs> but somehow it pays off because the enemy team is no not playing left. not playing inside the uh, hookah or any of these angles for some reason. No charges left. But here I would just wait. Okay. I would wait. Uh, also, you should also clear like below you first before you jump out. But I would wait inside the uh, hookah because most likely there should be people on site, and then you will have like a really strong angle if they if they try to fall back. Same thing with like cubby. If someone's in cubby, then they're like pinched between your team pushing for CT spawn and you standing in hookah, so that they they can't go really go anywhere. No charge. Second thing is that you're peeking like really early. You're like, uh, you want to like drop down, but by dropping down, now you're exposed to elbow, right? In this situation mm -hmm. right here, you could get, you could find yourself in a gunfight, and it's gonna be extremely hard for you to win it because you have a spectre, and your team's too far behind to help you. So basically, all these signs point to wait into hookah until like some signs point to it's a good time to drop or some good time to push. Okay. No charges left. Also don't want to peek Guardian. Definitely don't want to do that because our team is hasn't even entered sight yet. No charges left. So this whole time like we, we could have gotten to all these bombing ones, potential bombing ones, and died. And our team is not not in a position to help us. Yeah, I see what yeah. you mean. Well yeah, you, you die from Guardian, and then like even if you were facing the right direction to take the bombing one, like Nobody. I wouldn't have won that. You, like, even if you, like, um, like, whether you win or lose it, it's just like your team's not there to back you up because you're not waiting for your team. Okay. Yeah. So your team is still like they're still a city spawn where they're still pushing through elbow. They haven't actually gone to site yet. You're already on site and tapping the bomb, which is like way too fast. So yeah, basically you just have to like wait for your team. Okay. And now, now your team can help you. Like, if you waited like two seconds, now those raids has an angle on, on Garden, and maybe mm -hmm. that raise could have helped you. One enemy remaining. There. Nice Garden. Nice. All right, nice. Nice. 
Jones. I really like Time this map out. because there's no mid. You either have to go A or B. Yeah, there's no like cheeky spots <laughs> you can play, you know? And uh straightforward. Okay, so if I was enemy team I would probably force by Although they might they might full save. I probably expect a full uh, force by short cover going out. If it's your uh, breakdown deck, you can get zero RR, you can do dodge and you won't do right. Holy shit, nice. A chamber short, short as well. I was in with that nice. Don't want to push through this. Don't, don't push Uka. I mean, don't push lamps. One enemy oh, remaining. Oh, really good cross-gap nice. placement. Sure. Check the ice, put the wall. Oh, okay, now much TPs. Don't chase that. With your omen. Wait, let's stick together, yeah. <laughs> Just stay together. Actually, shoot it up. Shoot up. Okay, Omen has up. So, as well. If it's your uh, breakdown deck, you can get zero RR. You can do dodge and you won't do right. Holy shit, nice. So they have Deagle, they have Randall. Sure well. I was in with that nice. But everyone else, though. <clears throat> One enemy remaining. Nice. Okay, so she has a vandal. Teleport. I'm yeah, I don't want to TP. Spike planted. You guys go thought. I'll go elbow. And I can find right. you wherever she is. Oh, don't. Pick, don't pick this early. is so embarrassing. Pick it too early. So, while you're standing here, you're picking this. This is fine because, like, your, your omen's with you, like, completely with you. So you're picking together. It's just that here, be careful about picking into sites. Make sure you don't pick too early so that your omen can still be able to trade you, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, say if you find yourself in a fight, like, say if uh, you pick the right side of tube, like, right here, right? Be careful about committing to this. Because your your omen is not ready to help you, or even if he was, it's hard for him to like to peek at the same time without like lining up with you. Right. So when you're picking these angles, you just want to like just peek for information. We just want to like, just jiggle, see, hey Jet, you there? Jet, you there? Etc. And then gain information that she's there or not there. Okay. And then. Then become really careful about from here because like right here, I'll you're both together. Like based on like look at the minimap, like see how close the omen is. Like his circles like overlapping your circle, so like, you're both like basically right next to each other, which is good. That's what you want. But as you're like pushing in, now it's like the gap goes bigger, goes wider. Now it's really wide. Now it's really wide, right? Now like if you find yourself in a good fight here, like you start peeking hookah, right? There's no way the omen can help you. Absolutely mm, no way because okay. he's too he's too far away. Where okay. you find yourself in a gunfight and then the omen can't trade you out. This next part is embarrassing. I remember what happened. You're gonna. Oh, yeah. We do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I threw that. I didn't have my gun out. This omen should have as well. I was also right. jumping. Gonna... The jumping lens is so bad. I mean, it makes sense because you want to like sort of mask your footsteps, so to speak. But you just have to have your gun out. But the main thing is it's not even those things is that you're pushing with all your omen. So that okay. you're, you're giving the jet a 1v1. And now she has and another, another, another 1v1. Another 1v1. So you should uh, coordinate with your omen or if coordination like communications line each like a. Uh, I think okay, so I think my plan was here was that I didn't think that she would push elbow, so I told her I told him that I would push elbow and he could push from that side. No, and she guys push push from the same angle. Okay. Because you want to avoid giving what we want to enemy, which is like basically what you did here, right? But like you got you mm -hmm. went one way, find yourself on one one, 
Now Omen is now in another 1v1, right? But if you guys like push Sight together, or it's a, if you guys push Ubble together, then if Jet was Ubble, it's a 2v1. If Jet Sight, it's a 2v1, right? Or at least mm -hmm. it's more likely to be a 2v1. Okay. Probably what I would do here is like, uh, let's go to drawing board. That I would stand right here and then look to the right. So I would cover elbow. Because uh, the only thing to concern about is like if Jet like pushes through, this is CT, which is like unlikely. But let's say what I would be looking to do stand here, watch elbow, cover elbow, and then look at, well, like, Tell the Omen, hey, drop your smokes right now. Like, you can smoke Puka, you can smoke um, Big Garden, you can smoke Elbow, whatever. Like, use your utility, then you guys entry on site. Okay. Even another option, you might even consider just like using a wall to help help isolate angles. Like, maybe you, as you guys uh, consider pushing in, you wall this right here. Okay. So that you can sort of like clear the tube, clear the cubby clear parts of, of, of garden, and then you worry, you wrap around, and then you worry about the right side of the site, etc. Mm. to help isolate. Okay. But yeah, the main thing is that you just want to like, wait for your, your, your team and make sure that you guys are playing together. Because the way that you lose advantageous rounds is by giving mommy ones to enemy team. Okay. So what this omen should do, let's say if you will omen shoes, you should just smoke. Mm-hmm. Just smoke. Smoke and then you can think about, oh, should I tap it? Should I save? Whatever. But like, this, this smoke utility is being completely wasted. Oh my god, my thing. Actually, he did smoke both. So like, what you could have done is like, as soon as you're dead, no reason to peek this because there's no way that Jet, like unless Jet like is dumb and throws around, that Jet is unlikely to re-peek this angle. Instead, she's just gonna stay elbow, wait for the bomb tap. So, if I was Omen, I should smoke elbow. Or if I was really committed to winning the round, then tap the bomb, peek elbow. Or smoke CT spawn, tap the bomb, peek elbow. Or like something to, like bait the Jet to peek. Because right here, there's like. You pick our ball, but there's no reason for Jet to even do anything until Bomb gets tapped. And then, if your goal is to ensure that Jet doesn't save, like you're keeping her locked so that she doesn't save, then we should stand inside Hookah. And you stand... Uh, I guess he doesn't really look at... Uh, like stand inside Hookah. And then you still... You can still watch Albo, or you can still watch CT spawn. And then, let's say you watch... You stand in Hookah, watch CT spawn, you can listen to footsteps to see if Jet like rotates out of, like from elbow to go to the te teleporter or something like that. They can catch you like mid rotation, for example. Same thing if uh, if you're in hookah, you're watching CT spawn, and then the Jet tries to go from elbow to CT spawn, then you can cut off that rotation. Okay. So yeah, I know this is not you, but just want like if you mm -hmm. were if you were in this omen shoes, that's how you right. were, you should play it. Instead of hey, he's like he. He's peeking back and forth, back and forth. He's like, oh my God, my just God. pick the the optimal spot, and then use your utility. Clutch. I would dodge like ten times a day. Holy shit! I'm heading straight okay, to you. I know lose this round, I would consider pushing into showers. Well, I mean, it's the same dodge. I would heavily consider pushing to showers. The hunt begins. Is slow A, what the fuck? No, okay, it's I would, B, it's I would B. definitely put you in showers. So, I'm wondering about this because, like, here you're playing in shorts. I'm heading shorts. Okay, I know. And, um, uh, we sure don't see anything, don't hear anything, but there's a bunch well, of I mean, stuff happening on the B. And then, even, even if that doesn't happen, I would even consider not even playing a short, I would consider just like playing showers or pushing into showers, walking to showers or something because fighting for the orb basically. Because you get wood, yeah, you get res. Yeah, I would yeah. have all. Yeah. Right, exactly. I've never looked at my RR. I, I would dodge get like 10 times. And then as soon as like, okay, a bunch of stuff happens, like the jet alts, the Vayner alts, there's a bunch of gunfire, 
then I would I'll probably just like full sprint into into shallows, get the orb, and then rotate. I mean, it's the same dodge. The hunt begins. One issue so far is that you guys have four people, almost five people now on Bombsly B, but nobody has died yet. So what I would expect actually is that enemy team is going to all take TP. So what I would do actually, if, if, if you find yourself in a situation like this, is that I would walk toward showers or, or walk uh, to get to outside of the teleporter. So that if someone does take teleporter, you're sitting outside of it or you're sitting T-spawn or whatever, you catch them off guard. So like you rotating all the way to B, you have much less value because all your teammates are still alive. There's not really much for you to do. Luckily he smokes a really bad, so this actually helps you isolate angles. Help you raise, help you Good kill. Match point. Let's show them out. Yeah, so they're super low on eco. Okay, watch this head top. On who? On anyone. Now both out. Placing swarm grenade. Don't fucking flood. Be careful of peakness if chamber if ults. Want to play, yep, let's there it is. Play. Probably don't want to peak this because he's going to have up. Prepare for hellfire. Okay, I will play aggressive what? as soon as possible. Which side? I would push a short. What the fuck? Do you understand why? Why? Uh, nope. What? Uh, B. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah? Like, no one is B right now. Yeah, but uh, the thing is that your omen is a T-spawn. So okay. what I would expect is that Someone is gonna hang back to fight this omen. So what I what I'm what I'm like thinking is that as this omen is like going from T spawn to B, that he's gonna find himself alone and you know, like a one one. So that's why I'm thinking like automatically I want to push a short to help our omen to regroup our omen and we can push together. Okay. So that if he finds himself an omen one, we can trade him out. When you find yourself an omen one, he trades you out. Yeah. So uh, that's why I'm thinking that uh, just push a short right now and get a flank. And then meanwhile, also too, that we have two and okay, so it's just just two people coming from CD spawn already. So another bullet point is that well like a rule of thumb is that in general you want to take advantage of as many angles as possible. And it looks like this is what your raise is trying to do, because your raise boom boss into teleporter and then takes the teleporter, presumably. Spike Maybe not because she's like super late for some reason. There's one holding uh teleporter. Okay, that's why she didn't take TP because someone's in TP. But she had the right idea that she your team wants to, to take advantage of as many angles as possible and like it's it's a lot easier to retake a site when you have more and more angles. Like, like more and more angles that like the enemy team has to worry about, right? So for example, if you're an enemy team, you're holding bomb site B. You have to worry about CT spawn, you have to worry about elbow, you have to worry about hookah, you have to worry about B long, right? There's so many angles that your team has to worry about. Right? Make sense? Any mm -hmm. questions? Mm -mm. Right now, I'll be looking to go off a killjoy. I don't know if I kill her. Oh, this oh. is what I was. There's no reason to push this. Yeah. The main thing you should go for is just go for this res right now. That's, that's basically what automatically if someone dies, I have res. I'm, I'm automatically thinking, how can I get this res off? Okay. Instead of like, here's like a really good play. Like if Reyna was alive, this is a good play. Because like now you're... Like if, if you and Reyna are like pushing together, like this is like good, good timing, right? But mm -hmm. here you're pushing by yourself. And there's no reason to push because now you have uh, the... Alt going off. So no matter what you do, this this stage is gonna get detained. So there's no point to even take this fight. She's like, oh, she's oh, unlikely gonna die. She's still on One enemy remaining. Oh, she's Last one, CT. 
I mean long, sorry. Oh, I think we lose this one up too. That slow is actually so insane. Wait, does it shoot off every- Okay, but he didn't kill you. I don't understand why it shoots No, um, his- He had a trap right in front. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And I couldn't straight, like, yeah. Go. <laughs> I got wall banged in the foot, dude. What the yeah. fuck? <clears throat> I love Go on my mark. Oof. Pushing, um, pushing you to kill They haven't pushed in yet. Piggy Rena. All in res. ASP, guys. Your duty is not over. I'm so stingy with my wall, I've noticed. Like, I won't wall when I res. <laughs> right there, you could actually be safe. Like with, uh, be stingy with it because like at the start I'm automatically thinking I want to wall and res, but then a couple seconds later I'll kill Joy. Look at the minimap. I kill Joy. Peaks a shred. So now a shred is clear. While she's watching a shred, I can res safely, yeah, it's which is what you do here. Mm. So yeah, basically just pay attention to <clears throat> minimap. Pay attention to like awareness. Yeah, that's why I didn't. Uh, well. Uh, don't don't fully rotate until they actually push push in. What chance is we gonna pick a little bit too early? player standing. That's how I you go be no. Hey Paul Sailor Mass, what are you thinking? Um, so I was gonna wall, um, hookah, but then Omen said not to, um, so let's say, okay, so if Omen were to back up a little bit and someone pushes him, I would probably jump up there and try to take a kill, or if he dies and I'm not able to trade off of him, I would probably stay there or drop down underneath, or, or actually I would just wall it. So do you mean like jump inside hookah, or do you mean like stay on top of this box? So, so like, if someone were to swing Omen, right, yep. and I still had time, I would jump onto Hookah on the ledge, probably, and then try to um, trade or bait him. And if he were to die earlier, then I would drop down to, like, under the window. Yeah. Or and then I'd probably wall and then yeah. jump under the window. The reasoning makes sense. I think that it's better for you to be in Hookah so that you'd be faster. Mm, Instead okay, of having yeah. to like jump into the windows inside the window. Mm, okay. And then you still kind of accomplish the same thing with your raise, like having a cross with your raise, if you're just standing like hugging the, the window of the hookah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And then actually something I'm really worried about right now is that No someone, one's watching long. Uh, I mean you're Kind of watching, you have a sort of a crosshair with rays on long. The problem is that someone could come to the left side, like, uh... Like that little window right there. Someone could stand yeah. here. And then you mm -hmm. end up moving one, right? And those rays wouldn't be able to help you. So that's even another reason not to stand here, but instead, stand inside here. Okay. Okay, so back to LC. <clears throat> I'll rotate over you, say. Mm, depends who has guns, though. Nah, it'll be a gun. DP's hard. Okay, I guess it's hard to say, but um, if Omen has the better gun, I would tell him to rotate while we stay here with, with the... Uh, and hold Hookah, because we have a Spectre. Mm. Uh, I'll rotate over you, say. But okay, we choose the rotates. Omen has flank. So nice. Okay, he has shorty, that's why. Nice, okay, GG. There's, There's one, one elbow V. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> hey, what is he guy? 
Nice. Okay, GG. There's one okay. elbow lead. What the fuck, bro? There's one elbow lead. He said one elbow lead, but then you ice, ice hooker. <laughs> There's oh, someone died in hooker. What do you mean? Oh, nice. wait. So, okay. Hooker. So, what I thought, okay. I saw he died in hookah, so I thought someone was hookah. Okay. But then There's I guess I didn't hear him, so. One thing nice. is that uh, we know that our omen has shorty. Nice. And even right now, I wouldn't consider just like one time omen drop in the spectre, then pick up a gun. Nice. Mm, okay. We pick up Phantom or Vandal rather. Great. There's but then Omen, we're not sure if Omen has a gun yet, but we just saw him to our right. Nice. Okay. GG. Okay. So we see a Vandal to our right. So probably, again, this goes back to like pressing tab, checking what guns that people have. If Omen needs a gun, we can focus on getting him a gun, then we can like push to TP, or then we can like make a play. Actually, now I. We watching this, we see that Omen's on the left side there, he has a Vandal picked up. There's one elbow lead. What the fuck, bro? So, not a huge deal for now. But it is a huge deal that we're pushing by ourselves. Wait, don't peek. Wait for two. Spike planted. You can also just reload. One elbow lead. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> like, right here, you can just like sit inside TP, reload, and then push out. Uh, on B. Do I need Wait, to reload? For 18 bullets. Mm, you don't necessarily have to, but if you're safe, then it's like, why not, right? Mm-hmm, okay. Spike planted. It only costs you like a second, and it's not like you can push this ice anyways. Wait, don't peek. Wait for two. Spike planted. But now that the ice is gone, now you do have to worry about, okay, someone could be hookah, someone could push me while I'm reloading, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about like looking for those mini moments where it's safe to reload. This is like way too early. Wait for team. Yep, we for team. Exactly. He's mad. Right. Any questions so far? Mm, mm -mm. But I definitely learned a lot. Yeah, so let's look at the notes that we took. The biggest issue for right now is awareness. That a lot of times that you're just like doing things, but you're not really aware of like what's happening around you, what's happening on the map. And this, this it's like multiple things that goes into it where it's like you need to look at the look at the mini map, you need to like look at your teammates, where are my teammates positioned, what are they looking at, uh, what utility is being spent, are they spending utility, do they have utility, press tab, what guns do they have, do they have shields, do they have wall, or do they have smokes, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Like what does my team have, what does the enemy team not have, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So lots of things to consider when building up awareness. And then based on this awareness, like based on, based off the information that we've gathered, then we can think about what play that we want to make. Whether it's like we want to position somewhere, we want to trade someone, we want to play aggressive because someone else is playing aggressive, or someone's already cleared showers so we don't have to clear showers anymore, or someone is already watching a short so this res is perfectly safe so I don't have to burn wall, etc, etc. So a lot of like awareness things. Okay, so second bullet point is play to gun strengths. Like many times you you play with spectator, which is not necessarily bad. It, even though you can like buy a real gun, but you take like too many like mid to long range fights that you, that you don't want to take with your with a spectre, right? Instead, you want to like you want to lurk more. You want to play more close range angles. You want to play to like the spectre strength, but like you move fast or you can spray things down at close range, right? Try to take those types of duels or take those types of engagements instead of other engagements. Like it's like you're peeking like a short to heaven with a spectre where there's no way that you're gonna win that against anybody unless like you completely outplay them. Mm -hmm. And then not just about like engagements, but like 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 the spectre, you move faster, right? So that leans more toward like, oh I wanna look because I can look really fast with a spectre compared to if I had a, a phantom or if I had an op, then I really don't wanna look because like op is like so heavy, I move so slow, or I have an Odin, I move so slow with an Odin, I can't really look, I don't wanna look. But I have a spectre, yeah, I should be looking for opportunities where I can lurk. Okay, so third bullet point, set up cross areas for your team. There's many situations where like you just kinda like you play like some default position that you, you default to every every time that for like post plant, but you don't really think about like where is my team positioned and how can I play off my teammates. So there's like one round where like you guys ex execute onto a, onto a site and then you miss opportunities to cross away with your killjoy. You miss opportunities to cross away with your, your omen. And then you can like, like 
goes back to like playing to your gun strength, but you can like play close range angles with your specter or play close range inside lamps with your specter and set up a crossway your team. So you get like huge value, right? Now like you and your omen or you and your killage can like lock down an angle like super super easily and super hard. So yeah, crossfire is really strong. Try to abuse them as much as possible. Uh, press tab as much as possible to figure out how we should play rounds. So finding out like what guns your team has, finding out what guns your team doesn't have, or what the enemy team has or doesn't have, or if your enemy team has money or doesn't have money, right? Like um, what loadout your team has versus what loadout the enemy team has, like should dictate how you should play this play this round. But like. If the enemy team is like on a full save, you want to play safer. You want you want to make sure that you don't give up any guns. That if they have classics, make sure you don't give them a phantom. Make sure you don't give them a vandal, right? That would be really bad. Where it's only a round that that was like really winnable. Where like if you guys just play together, like you guys can most likely just five minute execute a site and just play together, and then you just take the site because like phantom and vandal would just be classics, right? Mm -hmm. and then then um. Making sure that you don't give up guns. Uh, make sure you try to play like long range angles. So again, playing to your gun strengths. If you have a fan of a vandal, you want to play long range angles. So for example, if you guys are against an eco round, instead of going a short, for example, or maybe instead of going shotways, for example, where you have to worry about someone could hold close left of a shotty, someone could hold close right of a shotty, someone could hold right outside of shotways with a shotty, right? Instead of worrying about all that, how about we just go be long? Where like it's a super long range angle. The only close range angle to worry about is really just guarding, which we can easily isolate. And then the only real like close range angle to worry about after that is like close lefts, like between the uh, garden and elbow, right? But like those are like uh, more so like one and done angles instead of like angles that where the enemy could potentially get out of. Like uh, let's say for example, um, like lamps for example, right? So like if we have a phantom of vandal and we're pushing into A, then we don't want to go deep into into lamps because someone could be there with a shoddy. And then they could kill us and then back off and we wouldn't be able to trade them out, right? They would be able, they'd be able to escape. So this all wraps around to press tab more often so that we know that what loadouts our team has versus what loadout, well, what likely loadout that the enemy team has so that we can figure out how we should play this round, whether we, oh, we should go A, we should go B, we should go somewhere that's long range, we should, we should take advantage of our Phantom, or Vandal, or Op, or whatever. Okay, so next bullet point, timing. Timing is actually should probably be about a lot higher, because like, too many times, like, you're, you're pushing in by yourself, <laughs> basically. Um, you're always like, like, half the time you're pushing and maybe this is because like you're you're not aware of like what's happening around you. Like you're not aware that your team is still CT spawn. Or you're not aware that your team is still rotating. And even though like you're on site, you're like, oh, I wanna I wanna clear the site. I wanna check this. I wanna check that. I wanna ice this thing. I wanna tap bomb. I wanna do all these things. But all these things are like really risky because like you're by yourself. You have to like clear all these angles by yourself. But it could be a lot easier if you waited for a teammate to catch up to you. You waited for a teammate to rotate and help you, right? Or or uh, maybe it could be a co uh, coordination or communication thing. Like, it could be easy, like, hey, Omen, flash me. Hey, Flayna, flash me. Then, okay, then I can peek, right? Then, I, even though I'm peeking, like, by myself, somewhat kind of by myself, I'm still peeking with an Omen flash, or I'm peeking with an Arena flash, or I'm peeking with some Omen smokes to c cover some angles, right? An example, like, where... Now, let's see that, where that round was. Go. You know, like, here, for example, right? This round. Now your team is CT spawn, we're in hookah, and like, oh, I want to I wanna drop down, I want to clear this thing, I want to clear that, I want to tap no, bomb, right? Imagine if we asked our omen, hey, omen, flash elbow, well, not flash elbow, I'm sorry, smoke elbow, or like, hey, omen, smoke uh, guardian, right? Now, if imagine if those two angles were smokes, and we drop down, we can keep our crosshair focused on left, or keep our crosshair focused on right. Instead of, we drop down, now we have to clear, like, so many angles, Meanwhile, somebody could still be sight, like someone could be two left or right, right? No charges left. And then we peek the garden, right? So like, don't be afraid to like, ask for utility, like ask for smokes, ask for flashes, whatever. <clears throat> to help you. Or, yeah. or better yet, just like, just wait for your team. Because like, your team is like, still pushing through CT spawn, just wait for them. And then, 
when they make contact, then we can push out, right? This, this again goes back to like the red light, green light. We're like, we want to wait until the enemy is distracted or wait until our teammate is uh, like about to make a play or about to aggress, right? Then we can be aggressive at the same time. Then we can, then we have a green light to, to do our thing. But otherwise, if nothing else is happening, then it's a red light. We have to wait. We have to wait okay. and play safe. Okay. Yeah. So another thing too is that you want to slice the pie because like so many times we're like, uh, here we just like, we just wide swing this. And then here we, we just kind of somewhat not really swing, but we don't really check all the angles, right? We didn't mm -hmm. actually play off hookah. And then here we're like, we didn't look at the right cubby, we didn't look at elbow, we just immediately just drop. No Cause like, here you can, you can look at the cubby, you can hug the left side, look at the cubby a little bit deeper. Then it comes time to look the left side, we can hug the right side, and then look to the left of the box. We kind of do there a little bit, but we can actually stay hookah and then peek into elbow without immediately dropping. So try to isolate angles, clear them one at a time, and try like, this idea of like slicing the pie, which I'm not sure if you've uh, heard the term or watched the video yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. So yeah, make sure you clear all the angles, make sure you clear them properly, and try not to be lazy when clearing angles. Okay, uh, any questions so far about the, the major stuff? Mm, no. <clears throat> okay. And so some minor things that showed up here and there was like uh, too many times like you retreat toward angles that are not safe or not necessarily cleared. I think there's a um, an example where I think you were on like a you were defending A, you were looking at A short, and then like Raze was temporarily covering showers, and she looked away from showers, but then you retreated toward showers, and that was like a minor lapse in like awareness. But also like also like you're moving toward angles that you're necessarily not not necessarily cleared yet or not necessarily covered, not necessarily safe. You know, there's a better example where like you were inside, I think like lamps or something, and then you found the sage, you're finding the sage, you looked, you're trying to run away from the sage, but by running away you run into a chamber. You manage to kill a chamber, but you run away, you try to reload, and you run into a brim. Because like too many times like you're running toward places that are not necessarily safe. Okay, so a second bullet point, try not to entry first to the bomb. It's like really okay. risky, you want to lose the bomb obviously. Um, this kind of goes more along the lines of like timing because it's many times like it's you're entering just because like you want to entry and not because like it's a good time to entry. Be like if your team is entering with you, then it's a good time. But if you're entering alone by yourself, then it's a bad time, right? All right. And then when entering, try to hug walls. Um, again, this goes back to like slicing the pie, make sure you clear all the angles. Try not to, when you're entering, like stand in the middle of nowhere, like here. No charges. Mm -hmm. Even here, you, you manage to like, this is like basically you're in the middle of nowhere for like a split second while you're rotating. Like, this kind of makes sense because you're, like, you're trying to rotate over. But like the, I think, uh, what was it? I think it was like an attack or something. Should have put you with the player. angle. Oh, maybe not. Here. Here we're in like the middle of nowhere, right? And we're exposed to so many angles. So when we're entering, we're trying to, we want to try to like leapfrog off of our teammates. So set up a leapfrog where like we go in first, and let's say we go in first and then we hug to our left, which is like what you kind of head, headed toward. You headed to the left. It's good. You just have to stay there with your teammate to push out. Then you can push together with them. So when entering, try to hug walls. Try to avoid being standing here. Where like the only way for you to escape this situation is if you kill this brim and you kill this chamber, and you hope that hope to God that no one is behind you, and you hope that no one is <laughs> right. peeking from hookah, right? You expose right, it just yeah. Like, yeah, you expose it too many angles at the same time. So yeah, entering, entering, or just in general, like almost all the time, should, almost all the time you should be trying to hug walls. And this goes to like when you're um, entering, like say you're pushing into to hookah, for example, hug the left side, clear the right, then hug hug the right side, clear the left, right? So hug walls all the time. 
Um, when you enter, the goal is to try to gain map control and avoid blocking your teammates. So we talked about like trying not to stand directly in the line of sight of your teammates so that your teammates can shoot freely and the enemy team, if they shoot at one person, they don't accidentally hit multiple people. Uh, okay, fourth bullet point, try to default more often. So many times that you and your whole team basically like execute A, get smoked, and then the, the push is over. And that happened like five rounds in a row. So don't be afraid to to like those are times like that you actually do want to play solo. Like here like you're you're trying to entry, you're trying to like do like a solo play. If you're gonna make solo plays if you're intending to make solo plays like this, make it where it's like higher value. Where like your team is like four men pushing A and it keeps getting stopped. Well what if you solo entried or solo sort of solo entried onto bathrooms or you solo entried onto onto belong or hookah or something like that, right? Then say for example you get killed on hookah or you find out that no one's playing hookah, then you can tell your team, hey, just wait to the B. I've cleared all of hookah. You guys can just like full sprint, right? Instead of mm -hmm. having to worry about oh someone could be pushed up B short, someone could be pushed up B long, whatever, right? Now your team has like much less angles for them to clear, they they can rotate much faster. Okay. And it also leads into um like Let's see, uh, like gaining, gaining more map control, gaining information, uh, denying information if that's possible. So like you gain information about, oh, okay, no one like no one plays hookah, so I can walk into hookah for free all the time. Or I gain map control, we have control of, of hookah, we have control of p short. Or we can take it a step further, let's say we want to play in risk here, we say, hey team, keep making noise at A, I'm gonna, I've heard the, like, um, say I'm standing inside hookah, and I hear the person who's elbow rotating out of sight. Maybe they rotate to a CT spawn, right? And then maybe I see them leave from CT spawn. They start, they start, both of them start leaving, running toward A, right? Now your lick has mm -hmm. like has insane value. Where like you can just like continue walking up up to CT spawn, and just like camp CT spawn and tell your team, hey, B's clear. Just rotate B. You can full sprint. The site's completely clear, right? So like this is like the power of like defaulting. Like you gain information, you gain map control. Um, so that you're, you're not hard stopped, or your executes don't get hard stopped by a single smoke or a single slow. Okay, so next bullet point, uh, wait for res, don't push alone. I think there was one round where, like, um, you didn't have res available. Or, like, uh, no, I'm sorry, you did have res available. You, you res someone and you, you basically pushed into, into hookah. So this is an example where like, you were, be short, so you can find that round. Just okay. When it was a defense or was it attack? I think it was attack. Yeah, here, perfect. Hey, meanwhile, you're peeking all these angles. You expose all these angles, and then you push into hookah. But this Vena is still like in this res animation. She can't actually help you yet. Mhm. Mm okay, and now she can help us, kind of. She's reloading. Be careful. Don't push in yet. Okay, so actually, don't drop in. Yeah, but like, here like we were pushing after this res, but we should just wait, wait like two seconds. It's like, we don't know if someone's hookah, they could peek us and then get two kills off of this. Yeah, so wait for res, don't push alone. Uh, avoid wide swinging angles all the time. Try to peek for information more. And then you can do a committed peek later with your team, or with a wide swing, or with a crouch, etc. So, differences with peeks were like, there's some peaks where you just like, like say you peek normally, right? You just slice the pie as a normal peak, where you just uh, isolate this to become a one v one. Some other peaks where you know, like the wide peak, where like people, like uh, low rank players, like they wide peak all the time because they they don't they don't understand like how to peek properly, and you want to avoid like uh, wide peaking. And other types of peaks are like information peaks, like say you shoulder peak, you jiggle peak or you jump peek, right? Those three types are all specifically for information because you're not committed to that gunfight or you're not committed to this peek. This this is where, where you would want to do that. Well, like, say you res this and then you just want to gain information if someone is on this box. Or you want to gain information if someone's to the left of Fuka. So that, therefore, instead of like white swing into here, you should just shoulder peek this and say, hey, is someone on this box? No, okay, great. And 
Mark the right wall, check the left, shoulder peek or jiggle peek. Hey, someone to the left? No, great. Then where's the safe, right? Those kinds of things. So don't always think that you have to like wide swing everywhere. I mean, don't even think that you have to even um, peek normally everywhere. Sometimes that you want to play committed versus not committed, right? It's, another example is like uh, on attack. Yeah. And then it's like you and Killjoy. Down B. Okay, maybe it's the next round. What was the next round? Okay, maybe not. Okay, this is some round where you're doing Killjoy, right? Hmm, maybe I can't find it. You have to know which one it was. <laughs> he he swung no. like he swung his. Uh, what is that shit? Which 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 part were you looking for again? When you guys executed B, you planned the bomb at B, Attack. and then uh, you Go were smoked me. out, and then you were considering whether to push to the smoke or not, and then you said you wanted to spray through it. Oh, and spray through it. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. Hmm. Got it. Yeah, that one. Okay. So in this situation, right? Like, imagine if you if you weren't in um, in the garden or this wasn't smoked out, whatever, and you, you have the option of peeking, right? So what you want to do is that you want to peek for information to well, even before it's actually enemy remaining. Like right here, because we don't know where the last person is, and we want to, if possible, safely as possible, gain information about where the enemy is. Therefore, we should. Try to jiggle peek or shoulder peek or something, jump peek, whatever, just to gain information. So mm -hmm. imagine if this wasn't smoked, we could, in theory, jiggle this corner so that we can peek sights. Maybe peek right side of two, maybe peek left side, or something like that, right? Peek sights. But, okay. But we don't want to commit to a gunfight until our killjoy is ready. So our right. killjoy is like in be sure right now. We we don't want to find ourselves in a gunfight with a with the brim on sight and our killjoy is not ready to trade us out. So therefore, we should we should still try to peek for information, but we should try to do it as safely as possible. Try to jiggle peek and not commit to the gunfight. Okay, another example would be instead of peeking, it might be an angle that we choose to hold. So let me bring up a map for example. So an example might be if we want to check, uh, we want to like watch the right side of the tube, right? Let's, let's say that's an example, right? And then okay. we're standing here. We're Sage, we're standing here. And imagine it's not smoked out. And then we have full vision of all this. This is actually more committed than if we were holding a tighter angle. Okay. Right? So example, let's say that we just want to peek the right side of the tube, so we hold like a tiny sliver like this. Right, so actually we hug the, we kind of go to the right side instead of standing in the middle or even like a standing to the left. Right, by standing to the left, then what can happen is that someone can like, the boom is here, he can swing, he, gets, he stands here, and then now we're like more committed more committed compared to if we hold a tighter angle. Uh, this is not me not the best example. Maybe I could find something like in-game. I don't think there's another time that I actually hold long like that. Yeah, so here's an example. Here's an example, we're, we're holding an angle and it's more committed. It's, mm -hmm, like, it's, more, sure. it's more committed than it needs to be. He's gonna die. Compare this to the very beginning of it. Shorty, bro. I could just hold a tighter angle. Oh, crap. Fucking shorty, bro. Imagine if you held the angle like... This. Right, so you have a tiny sliver. 
Whereas like you're completely not committed to this gunfight. If someone swings out, they swing out, whatever. And then they swing past your cross your cross here. Right? Mm-hmm. But here, you stand here. If someone swings out, you're super committed. You're like, far, yeah, my you're, whole body's out. Yeah, exactly. So this is like a more committed angle. So this is the type of angle that you you don't want to hold when you're you're trying to play uncommitted. Your your team is like is up in numbers, for example. Like say it's like 2v1. Because again, you don't want to give 1v1s, right? You want to force 2v1s to happen. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, let's see, that was this bullet point. Avoid by swinging. Try to peek for information more. So, different types of peaks. Many, many different types of peaks. Committed peaks versus non committed peaks. So like, peeking like a wide swing is like generally pretty committed. Peeking for a couch is generally pretty, pretty committed. Uh, talk about different ways to hold angles, so committed angles versus non-committed angles. And then last bullet point, when you have res and someone dies, you should automatically think, how can I get those res off? Like almost immediately. That's like, I don't want to say it's like your job as Sage, but it's like the high, most likely the highest value thing you can do as Sage is like res someone, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so like basically keeping awareness of like where where your teammates are, where do they, where did they die from? And then who killed them? And where did that person go? Or where is that person now? Yeah, okay. So yeah, there was like one round where like you the, you were three stacks at B long and then the kill the kill jury was someone died at B short, then Raina died at B short. Then mm -hmm. you, then you're thinking you should, or you should be thinking, how can I get this vez off immediately as fast as possible? And okay. Or as safely as possible. So it's not necessarily like you immediately start running over to the body and, and get the res off and like force the one with the sage. But it yeah. could be like you ask your teammate, hey Omen, go with me, I'm gonna go for this res. Or ask Omen, hey, can you smoke the body or smoke hookah or something to like to help me isolate these angles so I can get this vez off, something like that. Okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. All right. Any questions so far? I'm good. Right. Um, yeah, I think uh, I didn't even talk about your aim that much. I think, think your aim is not really a big concern right now. Like it seems like you hit most of your shots well enough. More so, it's just like the awareness and the timing that's really a big concern. Where like too many times you go by yourself, and there's too many times you're not paying attention to what what's happening. But I think if you if you basically just fix these two things, then like you definitely go like climb like multiple ranks. Okay, I will play tomorrow, and I will also record my first game tomorrow. Okay, All I right. think uh, probably give it like several games, or like maybe like a week or something, so you really start to mm -hmm. practice these specific concepts. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily like the the first game, but I don't know. Right. A few games or whatever. I think I want to see like right after you um, this mm -hmm. raw review, and then like after I I establish those um concepts okay and uh i'll say that for your next few games don't worry about winning or losing i'd say focus on like how well you were able to time your aggression with your team or 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 figure out the not if you forgot but like um, um analyze yourself like how how often did you press tab like this bullet point here how often did you press tab and then think about like how you change your playstyle for that round because like Oh, I press tab every round now, and now I'm thinking about what I should buy or how I should play, and that's dictating how I'm playing this round. Like that would be a win, like in your book or any anyone's book, more so than actually winning the round. So right, like, establishing okay. these habits, like getting the habit of pressing tab, getting the habit of like um, timing your aggression correctly, or like or like, making sure that you're always abusing your gun strengths, play to your gun strengths instead of their weaknesses, or like how well you were able to. Um, pay attention to things around you. Like say for example, if you were playing a shorts and then you um this was this this wasn't something that they came up necessarily, but let's say that you come to your team like, hey, I hear one person, two people, three people, etc. Like those specific types of comms. So you're not just saying like uh one like people A. Right? That's that's like a bad call out, right? Instead you say, oh, raise jet and arena, three people A. And Reno use flash or viper walled A, right? Those kind of callouts are like really important. But all, all that comes down to like awareness, like 
you need to like be aware of like what's happening so yeah i would say like uh gauge gauge your your progress on how well you hit these bullet points and not necessarily where you win or lose okay yeah i took a picture of your of the notes no i can just copy and paste this to you let's do it now okay Okay, any questions so far before I end it? Mm-mm. Thank you, Mingo. Right, no problem. I'm going to okay. start recording.